everyone, and welcome to Her Campus's Beauty School. I'm Annie Wang, one of the co-founders of Her Campus and your host for today. Whether it's sharing mascara recs, fangirling over new product launches, or applying your favorite face mask for a night in, we know the Her Campus community is beauty obsessed and that you just can't get enough when it comes to sharing tips, watching tutorials, and learning from the pros. So no matter what your real major is, today, consider yourself enrolled in beauty school, where we can't wait to show and teach you all the things. It couldn't be more fitting for us to be putting on this event in partnership with an amazing brand that is just as passionate about self-love, self-care, personal growth, and beauty as we are, Too Faced Cosmetics. Too Faced co-founders Jared Landino and Jeremy Johnson got their start behind the department store makeup counter, where working one-on-one -on -one with clients allowed them to discover the transformative power makeup had on women. Their vision was to create a makeup line that would celebrate individuality and inject joy back into an industry that had become rigidly led by rules when it should be all about fun. So we're thrilled to be bringing Beauty School to you today in partnership with Too Faced. And be sure to stick around as we'll also be chatting with Jared himself a little later on today. My co-founders, Stephanie, Windsor, and I started her campus in 2009 as undergrads at Harvard to support and lift up college women in all aspects of their lives. Today, her campus media is the number one media brand for college women with a presence on over 1,600 college campuses with 42,000 community members and millions and millions of readers around the world. You can find us at hercampus.com and follow us today on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Her Campus and at Too Faced, where we'll also be highlighting your posts throughout the event. To that end, be sure to post all about today with hashtag beauty school. Share your favorite tips and tricks that you hear and interact with our incredible special guests who will be looking out for your posts. So what can you expect for today? Well, we'll be streaming from now until about 12.30 p.m. Pacific time or 3.30 p.m. Eastern, and you won't want to miss a minute. Throughout the next few hours, you'll hear directly from our editors and campus trendsetters on all the latest beauty trends. Also, you'll get schooled on exclusive tutorials from members of our influencer collective, or as we like to call them, beauty school professors, as they share special looks using all of their favorite Too Faced products. Plus, we'll have very special appearances by members of the Too Faced team, including tutorials, a makeup masterclass with Too Faced Global Beauty Director, Elise Renault, and an exclusive Q&A with Too Faced co-founder, Jared Blandino. Last but not least, you have an opportunity to win an amazing beauty swag bag from Too Faced Cosmetics today. All you have to do is follow Her Campus and Too Faced on Instagram, like the giveaway post on Her Campus's Instagram, and tag a friend in the comments. No matter how you're tuning in today, everyone can head to beautyschool.hercampus.com for exclusive beauty school content and to shop the products you hear about today. Now, without further ado, let's get started. We'll be kicking off today's curriculum with Too Faced's Manager of Global Education Artistry and Digital Training, Jasmine Escoto. Jasmine has over nine years of experience in beauty and has traveled the world as a trainer and global artist painting the world pink. Jasmine uses color as a tool to boost confidence in women and men and is known for fun and innovative techniques that take the mystery out of doing makeup. Jasmine will be sharing tips and tricks on a mascara so amazing, it's better than sex. The number one selling prestige mascara in America, Better Than Sex, gives you mind-blowing lashes every time. Please join me in welcoming Jasmine Escoto. 
Hey everyone, my name is Jasmine Escoto. I am the Global Education Artistry Manager for Too Faced Cosmetics, and I am so excited to be here today to talk to you and show you our number one selling prestige mascara in America, Better Than Sex Mascara. I will also show you how to apply and give you some amazing pro tips and tricks that will change your lash game forever. If you have your Better Than Sex in front of you, go ahead, pull it out, because we will apply together. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Before we begin our application process, I wanna quickly talk to you about benefits and features. So Better Than Sex Mascara, one, how cute is the pink packaging? Two, it is an hourglass shape wand, which will separate and deliver voluptuous curl to your lashes. This mascara wand gets in between every single eyelash, so no lash is ever left behind. And this mascara is also amazing for hard to curl stubborn lashes like myself. So this is a total game changer. This mascara is also very conditioning, so you will never have to experience hard, crunchy lashes ever again. This is a vegan mascara, and of course, it is a cruelty-free mascara. So now that we know all the amazing benefits and features of Better Than Sex Mascara, let's put it to action. So what we will need is a mirror and an eyelash curler. An eyelash curler will be essential for anyone that has hard to curl stubborn lashes. So what I like to do is I like to look down into the mirror and curl my eyelashes for five to 10 seconds per eye. Now that my lashes are nice and curled, it's time to take our Better Than Sex Mascara. And I'm gonna show you our Too Faced signature move, which we call Bottoms Up. And we like to apply our Better Than Sex Mascara to our bottom lashes first. So go ahead and apply to bottom lashes. Hold at the root of the lash and then wiggle and pull down. The reason why we suggest to apply to your bottom lashes is because if you have long lashes and you apply to your top lashes first and you look up, what's gonna happen? You'll get mascara all in the crease and ruin your gorgeous eyeshadow. So this will help prevent um, ruining your eyeshadow or giving you some anxiety. Now you want to apply to your top lashes. I like to hold the mascara wand horizontally, place at the root of the lash, hold it there for about three to five seconds, and then wiggle back and forth all the way to the tip of the lashes. And repeat until you get as much product on those lashes and to really give your lashes those beautiful, voluminous lift and curl. And just repeat until you reach your desired eyelash look. All right, so now this is my favorite way to apply um, our Better Than Sex Mascara. It's actually to use the tip of the mascara wand, place it at the outer corner of your eyelashes, hold it at the base of the root, and then you're going to hold it there for about three to five seconds and then brush upwards to the very tip of the lash. And you're gonna repeat this motion until you reach that beautiful curl and lift that you want. This is amazing for hard to curl lashes and also a great tip for anyone that has sparse lashes. This will help to almost tight line between your lashes and your eyelid. So to finish the look, I will be tipping the ends. So right at the very tip of it, wiggle back and forth and then extend outward. And you wanna do that for both eyes. So just tipping the ends. This will help to give a little bit more length to your lashes. So now I am completely done with my eyelashes. I feel like they are at the level that I love my lashes to be. So this is the completed look using our Better Than Sex Mascara. I hope you guys have taken some amazing pro tips and tricks home with you and stay tuned for later today for a more elevated look. That was amazing. Thank you so much, Jasmine. I feel like I want to redo my mascara right now just to try some of those tips. Be sure to enter our giveaway on the Her Campus Instagram to win the Better Than Sex Mascara that Jasmine just taught us about and a ton of other Too Faced products. I'm thrilled to now introduce our first beauty school professor of the day, Madeline Johnson. Madeline is an influencer and content creator who loves how makeup allows us all to explore our creativity. She likes to experiment with seasonal looks and fun colors, which is exactly why I can't wait to see her fall-inspired tutorial that is perfect for this time of year, featuring the Too Faced 
Pumpkin Spice Warm and Spicy Eyeshadow Palette. Please join me in welcoming Madeline. Hi guys, my name is Madeline and today I'm going to be showing you how to create one of my favorite fall looks with all Too Faced makeup. This is really, really easy and perfect for beginners. Let's get started. For this look, I'm going in with the Chestnut Born This Way Foundation by Too Faced. With this product, a little bit goes a really long way. I'm going to use a brush to blend my foundation in just because I really like the feel of a brush and how it blends. You could also use a beauty blender or your fingers, but I prefer a brush. For our eye look, I'm going to be going in with the Pumpkin Spice Warm and Spicy Eyeshadow Palette by Too Faced. I'm going to begin with using the Spice Spice Baby Color because this one is just really nice. I love the brown it gives. It's a perfect nude color for fall, and it also has a nice orange tint to it. With this first color, I'm going in a tiny bit above my eyelid and also covering the entire thing just so that we're able to see the brown clearly. This makeup has really good pigmentation, so it should only take you a few minutes to get this perfectly blended. For our second color, I'm going to be using Ginger Spice to create an almost ombre look on my eyelids. This color is a nice reddish orange and it also matches a bit with the changing of the leaves for fall. Kind of my favorite colors. I'm going to blend that along the inner eyelids and then move on to Oh My Gourd, which is a really shiny eyeshadow. I like this one for my inner liner, just to make my eyes a bit shiny, make them pop. To complete our eye look, I'm going to go in with the Damn Girl Mascara. I absolutely love this one because you get voluminous lashes without any clumps or mess. I like to do my upper lashes and also my lower ones. I'm going to be completing the look today with the Rich and Dazzling Lip Gloss in the shade Pretty Penny. This one gives you a gold shimmer on your lips, but also matches perfectly with the fall colors that we used before. At the end, we're really just getting a natural look. This is the finished look. It only took me around five minutes. Super easy, simple, and definitely a great fall look. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Madeline. That look was gorgeous, and obviously, I could always use more pumpkin spice in my life. Our next guest is Gina Eskendon, her campus's beauty and culture editor, who oversees content and strategy for our beauty, wellness, sex and relationships, and culture section. We're so excited to have Gina joining us today to give us a crash course on the latest trends she's seeing and loving. Let's head over to Gina. Hi everyone, it's Gina Eskendon, beauty editor here at Her Campus Media. Welcome to Trend Report. I am so excited to be speaking with all of you today. I think this is going to be super fun and I hope everyone is enjoying beauty school so far. What I'm gonna be doing is providing a highlight reel of the coolest, extremely online trends that are taking place in the hair world right now that I think you need to know about. So sit back, relax, and let's dive in. First up, we are gonna be talking about how to tie up your hair without using a hair tie at all. Yes, really, no hairband, no problem in this situation. So this hair hack lets you put your hair up in a bun without needing a hairband or a scrunchie around to even do it, which is especially great if you're out and about and left your scrunchie at home. So simply twist your hair into a bun shape, pop the end through the middle, Pull it through just like how you would tie in a knot and you have a secure bun. It's that simple. If you have short hair, what you can do is segment off the top piece of your hair around your crown, keep it separate, put the rest of your hair into a ponytail, um, and then use that hair that you segmented to tie a knot around your ponytail and keep it in place. And that's it. That's all you need for this hack. 
So the next trend we're gonna talk about is hair plopping. Hair plopping is seriously the best hack for curly girls out there. So when your hair is wet, what you're going to want to do is ideally just out of the shower, brush through your hair and spray in either a sea salt spray for some nice fresh smells or a detangler if you want your hair to feel super soft. It all just depends on your mood. Then while your hair is still damp, flip your head and your hair over um, and rest it into a t-shirt. I usually set up the t-shirt on my bed and then just flip my head over and literally plop all of my hair down. Um, then you're going to wrap the t-shirt around your head, tie it, Make sure it's securely fastened so that it does not fall off um, when you go to sleep because that will mess up the plop. And then when you wake up, you can remove the t-shirt. If your curls are still a little wet, you can let them dry naturally throughout the day. Um, and then once they dry, you're gonna notice that you have the most gorgeous ringlets that are not frizzy or crumpled at all. Um, as someone who has naturally curly hair, you would not know this by looking at me today because I did a little DIY blowout um, before beauty school, but I promise you are going to love this. Um, I also love to plot my hair on nights when my hair is not wet. I found that sleeping with my curls wrapped securely in a t-shirt keeps them from getting frizzy and flattened because I'm not laying on them while I sleep. And finally, last but not least, in recent hair trends, I need to talk to you about sock curls. Let's go to Instagram for an example. So sock curls have the same basic premise as hair plopping where you need to let the treatment sit for a while, ideally overnight, to really see um, a strong and impactful effect. So sock curls are achieved by either taking a long sock if you have long hair or a short sock if you have a dude that's on the short side and wrapping it into a segment of your hair, twisting it up and securing with a clip against your head and then just leaving it, letting it sit. Just know that the smaller the segment of your hair, the tighter the curls will be. I personally prefer to section my hair into four or six different parts so that the curls come away a little bit looser and wavier. After leaving the sock curl then overnight, unwrap them from your hair in the morning. Just pull the sock straight down similar to how you would if you were using a curling wand. Somehow, with using just a sock and sleeping with it in your hair, you come away with perfect ringlets. I literally don't understand the science, but it is amazing. This hack is so good. So if you love your curls, you can just hairspray them to keep the look tight and defined. Or if you want something a little bit wavier, like I tend to do, I usually take the curls and just lightly brush them out or finger cream come through for a final look. And that concludes our hair trend report. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm gonna be coming back later with another special segment on nails. Let's get back to beauty school. The best makeup advice that I ever got is to always remember there's no rules to makeup. A lot of times a girl thinks there's a step-by-step -step guide, a how-to, how to do this, how to do that. But the crazy thing about makeup is that it's your creative realm. You're supposed to be unique in your looks and unique in your imagery. So always remember to be authentic and creative when creating new makeup looks. The best beauty advice that I've ever received is that your makeup should enhance and accentuate your natural beauty and not cover it up. And this is why I love Too Faced products because they allow me to do this. The best beauty advice that I've ever received is that since everyone's so unique, you should always try to look up um, makeup techniques or makeup looks that work best for your specific facial features because one look could look completely different for two different people. The best beauty advice that I ever received is to focus on skincare because if your face is not smooth or flawless, then your makeup will not be smooth or flawless. So remember to wash your face twice a day, exfoliate and moisturize. Wow, I definitely need to try hair plopping ASAP. Gina and our campus trendsetters will be back later with another trend report and more insights, so be sure to stay tuned. Our next beauty school professor and influencer collective member is an absolute dynamo. Carrie Burke is a 17-year-old author, actress, and social media influencer. She stars on the Brat TV series Stage Fright 
and is the creator of Carrie's Chronicles, a style empowerment blog. Today, Carrie is sharing a bold look, perfect for going out, featuring the Born This Way Natural Finish Foundation. Take it away, Carrie. Hey guys, welcome to Too Faced Online Beauty School. My name is Carrie Burke and I'm an author, actress, and social media influencer. I'm so excited to welcome you to my session today where I'm gonna teach you how to do a natural, effortless, easygoing makeup look that you can wear to online school with a pop of color. Let's get started. First, I'm gonna be taking the Born This Way Undetectable Medium to Full Coverage Foundation. Now, I love this formula because it not only makes your face look radiant, but it makes it moisturized as well. I'm just going to glide it directly onto my cheeks. As you can see, I have naturally red cheeks, but immediately this covers up the redness and goes on so smoothly. This is also an oil-free formula, which I love because I have pretty oily skin, especially in the T-zone, and this has always been my go-to foundation. I also like to blend it into the neck so there's not two different colored tones. That would look really weird if your neck was a different color than your face. Okay, now that I applied the foundation, I usually like to take a beauty blender and press it into my skin to make sure that there's no creasing anywhere. Next, I'm gonna be using the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. This conceals, highlights, contours, and retouches at the same time. I love how this has a wand, so you can literally apply it in a triangular shape directly under both eyes. Now I'm just gonna take the same beauty blender as I used before and blend it out under my eyes. As you can see, immediately this is covering any trace of a dark circle under my eye. I'm also gonna put some on my eyelid, making sure to press it in so there's no creasing at all. This literally looks like I'm wearing a filter right now. It is so good. Next, I'm gonna be using the Chocolate Gold Soleil Gilded Bronzer. This is actually made with 100% cocoa powder and real gold. It even smells like cocoa powder. So I'm gonna put this right from the top of the ear down to right before the mouth. Sometimes I find it helpful to make a kissy face too. I'm obsessed with how this is turning out right now. It's not even a cream contour, and that usually gives kind of a too dramatic look, so I really like how natural this bronzer looks. I also usually like to apply some bronzer under the neck and right at the top of the forehead. And sometimes if you wanna blend your bronzer out a little, I recommend taking either a foundation brush or a beauty blender and just blending it out lightly so it blends nicely into your skin. Next, I'm gonna be using the Chocolate Gold Eyeshadow Palette made with 100% cocoa powder and real gold as well. I love all the luxurious and matte shades that are inside of this palette. And since it is for online school, I'm gonna choose some pretty neutral shades, but again, this pink color is perfect for a night out on the town. Socially distanced, of course. First, I'm gonna be taking the shade So Boozy. Now on top, I'm gonna to layer a little bit of the shade Cocoa Truffle. This actually smells like cocoa, it smells so good. And now I'm gonna take a little bit of shimmer with the shade Famous. Now it is time for my favorite product of Too Faced ever. I use this on the daily, it is the Better Than Sex Mascara. This literally makes it look like I'm wearing false lashes. It makes them so dark and long and voluminous. I'm obsessed, I could not rave more about this product. the last step. I'm gonna be using the Too Faced Melted Matte Liquefied Longwear Wearing Lipstick in the shade Lady Balls. Now this is the pop of color that I was referring to at the beginning of the video. It is a bright red lipstick. Guys, you need your makeup to transcend the virtual screen. I cannot say this enough. You need that pop of color so people can see you all the way from wherever they are. Now I especially love this solution because it glides on like a gloss but it has a matte finish. Check this out. also makes your teeth look whiter, so that's a plus. And here's the final look. Thank you guys so much for 
for tuning in. Make sure to go shop the products I featured in this video right now. And if you replicate this look, tag me on Instagram at Carrie Burke with an extra K at the end and at Too Faced. I can't wait to see what you guys create. Thank you so much again for tuning in and I love you guys. Looking flawless, Carrie. Thank you so much for sharing that look with us. Now switching gears a little bit, we recently polled our Instagram followers on popular beauty topics like how often you wash your hair or what order you do your makeup in. And I know my team is so excited to hash some of that out with you now and throughout the event. So here with their takes are a few members of our Her Campus team. Influencer manager, Laura Von Linsaway Wilson, branded content manager, Madeline Bocan, social media editor, Maddie Hyatt, and campus community associate, Alexis Martin. Let's see what they think. Wow, this is honestly the best day ever because I haven't done my hair and makeup in so long. I don't know about you guys, but I've needed no. inspiration. You know, it's like I need to get excited to do my morning routine again. And I feel beauty school is exactly that. What are you guys loving so far? Yep, 100%. I am obsessed with the pumpkin spice palette that Madeline used. I definitely have to go pick that up after this because, yeah, I haven't done my makeup in forever. I feel like for me, I have always been obsessed with the Better Than Sex mascara, but after watching Jasmine's tutorial, I am so inspired. Like I'm wearing it right now. I love it so much. And um, I actually can't wait to see like the rest of the content too. I feel like it's been such an inspirational day so far. Yeah, and for me, I feel like I've learned so many makeup tips and tricks and I just can't wait to try them all after beauty school is over with. So I'm excited. Definitely. Speaking of tips and tricks, though, I was chatting with my friends and we were talking about how we get ready in the morning. Do you do your hair or your makeup first? I know that for me, it depends. If I'm washing my hair, I'm going to start with that just because I have to brush it out, do my curl cream, whatever that may be. But if it's not a hair wash day, I start with my makeup. What do you do, Alexis? So for me, makeup absolutely goes first. I feel like it takes me longer to do. And when I sometimes do my curls first, they fall before I even get to walk out the door. So I like to have my curls all set, my makeup all set, and then I'm ready to take on the day. You guys, no, hair first or bust. Oh my gosh. No, I, no, I am 100% hair first. I like to do my hair and then like take a sec and then do my makeup. Guys, I don't know if I'm just like, I feel like I'm not abnormally sweaty but if i'm doing my hair with like a hot tool i get hot i don't want my makeup to be like sweating off my face already and plus, i know that you said you don't like your curls to fall where i'm like kind of the opposite i curl really really tight and then i want my hair to fall a little bit while i'm doing my makeup so i get that like beachy wave situation i cannot even fathom doing my makeup first you guys i cannot madeline madeline tell me what you do please tell I me I'm afraid to answer this question. I feel like if I tell you how I get ready in the morning, we're like not going to be friends anymore. I don't know, but like I am makeup first. Like oh I am 100% do my makeup first. Yeah. Yes, I get the like getting hot thing because I totally like, I'm not going to lie, I sweat when I'm getting ready. Um, but Thank yeah, you. I have to do my makeup first. I don't know. I, I like pulling my hair back and like getting it real tight off my face and just doing my makeup. No. I'm sorry now. I don't accept that. I don't accept that as an answer. I apologize. <laughs> Okay, let me, let me try again. Just kidding. I, I stand by my, my initial answer. So that is a good point, though. If I'm blow drying my hair, sometimes it gets so sweaty, especially in the yeah. summer. So that's definitely a consideration. I Yeah, I, I agree. I'm, I'm right. So I agree. Well, wait, wait, one, one question I have for you guys, Sim sort of on this topic, sort of off topic. But like, I get stressed out when I use hot tools and then leave to go do something. Like, do you guys get that like hot tool anxiety? I can't speak today. Um, I don't know. Like I freak out. Like I go to brunch and I sit down and I'm like, wait, did I unplug my straightener? Like, do you all go through that? Is that just me? <laughs> you sent me that TikTok of the girl that yeah. unplugs her, takes a video or a picture of something. And like, I've definitely been there when you go out and then like, I feel like every person that uses a hot tool has like walked out of the door and like that, like that feeling hits you where you're like, did I unplug my straightener? So yes, been there. I don't take pictures or like videos like the TikTok said. Um, <laughs> I make like, you know, when you're going through your just routine and you don't really think about what you're doing. Like when I unplug my straightener, like, and when I turn it off, I 100% like try to remember I'm pulling out the plug. Like I remember that I do it. But what about Alexis? What do you do? 
yeah, for me, I think that it's really, really important to unplug because again, I'm scared that I'm going to come home to a disaster. So I definitely love to know 100% like I unplugged it and I'm good to go. So I agree with all of you guys. We should make it a social trend, I feel like, or a challenge, I guess, right? Like snap a pic before you leave the house. I feel like it's the new, did I leave the oven on? If any of you can I I deal with that, like the oven thing. Like I'm obviously overly anxious about these things. If I, I have a whole album on my phone probably. Like I don't actually organize the photos, but there are probably hundreds of photos of unplugged curling irons on my phone. So wow. confession, now you guys know, hot tip. <laughs> Love that. Okay, so it looks like we still haven't settled the debate hair versus makeup first, but on the topic of hair, I'm curious to know how many times a week you all wash your hair. I know we have different hair types and textures. Um, so I'm curious to know that. And then also for me, I usually like to wash my hair once a week because I find that it's this big process. It's shampooing, conditioning, deep oh, conditioning. Wow. So yeah, it's, it's a process, let's just say. So let me know how you guys all feel about washing your hair and how many times a week you do so. So mm -hmm. I basically wash my hair, I would say six out of seven days on estimate. Like if I'm working out, I have to wash my hair. And so it does, I feel like my hair gets overly dry because I do wash it a lot, even when I am mm -hmm. but I don't know, it's like a weird thing. Like if, if my hair gets sweaty and I don't wash it, I just feel gross all day. Like totally. My hair gets kind of greasy and, and dry shampoo doesn't always cut it. Like mm -hmm. when I'm doing a cardio or interval workout, like I sweat. Like uh, now everybody knows that I sweat a lot. So um, yeah, I have to wash my hair. <laughs> But I, I'm a big like air dryer. So if I'm washed, it's not like, like you guys have seen me in my meetings. Sometimes my hair is still drying and you know, that's okay. Let's, let's normalize that. Um, but yeah, that, that's my answer. Uh, what about you, Lara? That is a little crazy to me because I wash my hair at most every other day. And I think it's partly because I have naturally curly hair. And so they say it's not good to wash your curls every day. Alexis, I'm sure maybe you can feel me a little bit on that one. But it's also just so much work, like especially if I'm going to go through blow drying it and all of that. And maybe it's because I've color treated my hair in the past, but sometimes it gets really like difficult to brush out. So it's just a whole process. Um, but I wish that I could literally just like sleep on my hair down and wake up and have it be beautiful. So I don't know. There's lots of things that I'm learning about washing my hair, but I definitely don't wash it every day. What do you do, Maddie? Um, well, unpopular opinion. I wash my hair every single day, whether I work out or not. No. Like, yeah, I literally, like, literally every single day. Every love going to sleep with wet hair. I think it's like it's very cooling. I, do that. Mm -hmm. and I love feeling that. Um, I also like. I don't know. There's just no better feeling in the morning than waking up with like clean hair. Um, and so as the social editor at her campus, I decided to ask our her campus audience um, mm -hmm. if they agree with me or not. And 72 percent of people polled said that they can go a few days between washes, um, which I simply don't understand. But I respect kind of on your guys's page where, where I'm over here as every single day. So it's fine. Everything's fine. There you go. But wait, you go to sleep with wet hair. That's crazy. Like, I feel like if I did that, I mean, I've done it before accidentally, but, and I woke up and my hair is like kind of greasy because it, it. No. Wow. That's no, really it's not. It's I like, have that. no, I'm telling you guys, like there's nothing better than waking up with like hair that you don't have to wash. Like you, you already did the hard part last night, right? It takes like what, 15 minutes. Like I don't blow dry my hair. I, yeah, I love sleeping with wet hair. It's like one of those things that is such a habit to me now that I don't know that I'll ever be able to like, you know, wash my hair in the morning or like, I don't know, take a shower midday or something. I don't know. I just, I love sleeping with wet hair. Is that yeah. Instagram? Yeah. It's like, I go to sleep with wet hair. Like that is you. That's me. Yeah. Yeah. Please. That, that is me literally. No, I yeah. definitely have to braid my hair or put it into like a tight little bun or something. Cause if I sleep on wet hair or even dry, clean hair, it's, I'm going to wake up with like a nest the next day, you know, like it's going to be happy. Yeah. <laughs> I feel so that. I'm curious to know about dry shampoo. I feel like it doesn't work for me. So do you guys think that dry shampoo actually works? It's a really good product. Or you guys think that you need shampoo, you need water. That's what you guys, how do you guys feel? I like a dry shampoo, but have you guys heard that you're supposed to put it on the night before versus the oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. Packs, because apparently it's supposed to soak up all of the grease and everything overnight, and then you wake up and it's really beautiful. That's so we'll try that next time, maybe. 
Yeah, so, I like load it on. Like there's so much dry shampoo under this headband. Um, like there just is, but yeah, I always put it on literally as I'm, you know, walking out the door, getting ready. Wow. So yeah. fascinating. You have oh, yeah. you changed my world. Like I'm doing it tonight. I like maybe have like one dry shampoo, but again, I do wash my hair every day. So I never really feel the need to use a dry shampoo. I've used it a few times, like, you know, trying to break my everyday cycle. Uh, but no, there's, in my opinion, nothing compares to good old shampoo and conditioner in the shower, lathering it up, rinsing it out. 10 out of 10. I feel like I need to go take a shower now. Like I'm so excited to wash my hair. <laughs> That is a good point that you do have to train your hair if you want to have it, you know, not be greasy every day or every other day. But I'm all about headbands. So I'm glad that you brought that up, Madeline. Like, this is the best second, third day hair cover up. Yeah, I think I like, I just continue to stock up my headband collection. Yeah. Um, yeah, big fan. Is yours velvet or is it braided or what's your headband? Yeah, it's a little pseudo velvet situation, um, but it's braided. And I got a, like a four pack of these in all different colors. So almost one every day of the week, you know? How do you guys feel about the headband trend, Alexis, Maddie? So for me, I'm all about barrettes and scrunchies. Ooh. Um, yeah, they're really big. I am just obsessed with them. I'm not a big headband girl, but I, lo I will say I love you guys' headbands today. Um, and maybe I will try some, you know? You guys are, might sway my opinion. <laughs> I'm, I'm a big headband girl. Um, I don't necessarily use it in the same way that Madeline just said that she uses it to hide like one or two day old hair. Um, but I, I love, uh, love a headband with some fresh hair. Um, I also think they're just like way easier than like actually styling your hair. You know, you get it out of your face. Um, and yeah, no, I'm, I'm pro headband. I'm, we're pro headband in this group. Okay, we're pro headband. That is something we agree on. Yep. We're pro hair accessories. We're pro all hair accessories, yep. right? That's totally. Right. Yeah, wow. So clearly we have a lot of thoughts and we want to hear your thoughts. So please tag us using the hashtag beauty school and don't forget to tag Too Faced in her campus. My favorite part of my getting ready routine is definitely applying blush when I'm putting on my makeup. I just love how blush completes the look and makes you look alive, awake, and ready to go. And it's definitely my favorite step of getting ready. So my favorite part of my getting ready routine has to be getting glowy. I love starting out with a nice dewy foundation and going in with lots of highlight and a glowy blush and topping it off with lip gloss. This just helps me to feel extra confident and make it through the day. My current favorite beauty trend has to be no makeup makeup. Um, I really enjoy the natural look and I feel like it's super quick and easy when you have somewhere to be in the morning. My favorite part of my getting ready routine is choosing a lip color to match the rest of my makeup look and adding mascara. I think both of those things really help to complete a look and pull the whole thing together. My favorite beauty trend at the moment would have to be Thick, fluffy brows. Thick brows are in. And for the win. <laughs> my favorite thing about getting ready in the morning is doing my makeup. I think it is such an important step for me because it gives me like 20 plus minutes to just sit down in front of the mirror and focus on myself. No distractions from my phone, text, emails, anything like that. I can just focus on making myself feel good about how I look and how I feel. And that is just so important every morning that I have that positive affirmation. Super fun, and I'm looking forward to hearing more from Laura, Madeline, Maddie, Alexis, and our campus trendsetters again in a bit. Okay guys, now it's time. I've been so looking forward to this next session. Too Faced Global Beauty Director Elise Renault is about to give us the ultimate makeup masterclass alongside my co-founder, Windsor Western so you can learn how to achieve a flawless complexion using Too Faced's new Born This Way Matte Foundation. This product is waterproof, sweat and humidity resistant, and totally transfer resistant for all day, fresh, shine-free, naturally flawless skin. Elise will also be showing us how to use the Born This Way Super Coverage, the Natural Face Palette, and the Hangover 3-in-1 Setting Spray. These products 
seriously sounds so cool and I can't wait to see them in action. Elise is the face of artistry for Too Faced Cosmetics. In her role, she works closely with the Too Faced Chief Creative Officer and co-founder Jared Blandino to create global campaigns, develop new products, and teach us how to apply makeup the Too Faced way on all of their social media channels. Let's welcome Elise and Windsor. Hi everyone, it's Windsor Western, co-founder of Her Campus, and I am so excited to welcome Elise Renault to Beauty School. Hi, thank you, Windsor, for having me. I'm so excited to be with you and to talk about how to get a flawless Born This Way complexion today. And first of all, your office is so cute. You are so two-faced and pink and fun. Thank you. I um, love pink, obviously. So I have this pink bookcase, and then I actually got it all ready with all my Too Faced products up there. I also have my whole desk is covered in Too Faced products. I am so ready for this master class. Um, so will you introduce yourself to everyone watching today? Absolutely. So I am the global beauty director at Too Faced. And what that means is my most important job is to teach our girl and pretty boy how to apply our makeup. And I do all of our YouTube videos. I work very closely with our founder, Jared, who is, he's our Willy Wonka. He is our creator. He brings us all the most amazing products. And he has been doing that since 1998. And um, I, so I do that. And then I speak to press. I travel, you know, back when traveling was a thing, I travel all over the world doing master classes. And yeah, I just do, I do a little bit of everything at Too Faced. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, I feel very honored to get to learn to do my foundation and my makeup directly from you. So why don't we get started? Let's talk about what products we're going to use today. Um, we want to learn. This is beauty school. So I'm going to be asking you a ton of questions. We encourage everyone who's watching today, grab whatever foundation and concealer you have, get your tools, sit down, get your your light. I have this little um, makeup light sitting right next to me here. Um, get ready and do this with us, right? This is a master class, so let's do this together and let's have fun. Yes, and as we're going through, um, you know, you don't have to use everything. Makeup is supposed to be a powerful tool to make you feel self-confident. If makeup doesn't do that for you, don't worry about it. If you know, if you don't feel like contouring, you don't have to. Just choose whatever steps make you feel good and make you feel empowered. Cause that's what it's all about. Um, I always say makeup is my meditation. It's my me time. So I always use that time in the morning just to like do something nice for myself. And as a makeup artist of 18 years, I have to say that this new foundation that we have, this born this way foundation that I'm going to be using today. Um, it is a 24 hour foundation. And what's really cool about it is it goes on so easily but it lasts for 24 hours. It doesn't break up on your skin, doesn't clog your pores. It's waterproof, which is amazing. You push me in the pool, I dare you. <laughs> I dare you. Um, you see those memes that are like, oh, take her, you know, uh, uh, push her into the pool the first day. It's like, whatever, try me, try me. Try me. Um, yeah, and I think what's really cool right now is it's also transfer resistant. So that's something that like now more than ever when we're wearing masks, it's gonna yeah. be and that's going to be transfer resistant. So let's get into it. Let's start with prepping our skin. Prepping your skin is the most important thing. I think there's so many times when people are like, how do I get my foundation to last all day and not separate? And the first thing you always want to look at is are you using oil-based products with water-based products because mm -hmm. we know that oil and water don't mix. And there's so many oils out there. I love oils, but I tend to use them at night because all of our products are oil free. So if you're using an oil underneath these products, you might not have the same results. You might not get that 24 hour long wear. And it's always just something that you wanna look at um, and be aware of because I, I, a lot of people ask me, they're like, I get separation around my nose. It's not lasting around my jawline. Um, and we can't have that, right? No. no. So, so the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna give some options. So if you are an oily skin person and maybe you have enlarged pores, you might wanna try something like our Primed and Poreless. This is truly a true primer that kind of paves over pores. Um, I don't put it everywhere. I'll only put it on areas like that I'm seeing enlarged pores or areas of texture. Texture meaning maybe you have acne scars, maybe your, um, you know, your skin just feels like it has a little bit of texture. You have some flaky skin or whatever. Uh, you definitely want to use something that's going to actually 
prime over that. But if you are a dry skin person, you might want to try something like hangover primer. I get a lot of questions about people asking, do I need a primer? The answer is no, you don't need primer, but it helps. So it's going to help to prep your skin. We know that healthy skin looks beautiful under makeup. So that is the most important thing. And then the last thing I always want to say is you guys, everybody should be wearing sunscreen. This is our good to go. Yeah. You know what? It's the number one way to stay, to keep your skin looking young, to keep the wrinkles away. And it's so important in your twenties uh, to wear sunscreen and all the way through um, because it's not just from the sun that we're getting UVA rays, right? We're getting it from our computers. We're in front of our computers all day. Those blue lights. That's why you see everybody starting to wear those blue light glasses. Yes, right? yes. That's amazing. Okay. So everyone wears sunscreen every single day, even if you're not going outside. Absolutely. So okay. it's really important. And then before I get started, I also always prep my lips. So the first thing I'm going to do, I, I have my eye makeup done. I have nothing on my skin except for my sunscreen and my primer. I already prepped with that. But I also always prep with a little lip injection extreme. This is super hydrating on my lips. It's the number one selling uh, lip gloss in the nation because what? it actually works. It's clinically proven to plump your lips instantly and over time. But I just like to prep with that to give myself a little pout no matter what um, lipstick I'm going to wear. So that's just something I always do. Give myself some hydration and um, we can get started. So what I'm going to do, I am going to be using the shade Seashell. That is my shade of Born This Way. And I'm also going to be using a Mr. Perfect brush. There's no perfect way to apply this. You can apply it with your fingers. You can apply it with a beauty blender, dampen it, or you can apply it with this brush. What I love about the brush is I'm going to show you just what one pump does. So I'm going to put a pump on the back of my hand okay. and then I'm going to work it into my brush. Now working it into your brush is the most important thing because if you just touch it and you put it on with any brush, you're going to get streaks and you don't want streaks. So you you really wanna work it in. It's a synthetic brush, so it's not gonna absorb. It's just gonna keep it in the bristles. And then I'm gonna start in the middle of my face and I'm gonna work out and down. Okay. When you're thinking about applying, you always wanna think about uh, the vellus little peach fuzz hairs on your face. Mm -hmm. You always wanna lay those down. Now, personally, I shave my entire face. That's like a little trick that I do with the, just one of those little, um, razors I get on Amazon yeah, you can use for your eyebrows exactly eyebrows. exactly so um and if you're using a beauty blender really can I I just wet my beauty blender with this is that okay that's perfect that's okay. what I do so she um Windsor's holding up our three-in-one hangover spray it is my favorite setting spray you can use it before uh your makeup and then throughout your makeup. I like to set with it. When you set with it, it takes away any makeupy look and it just makes your, your makeup look like really like skin. It also helps to keep your makeup on longer, even though this is long wear, so technically you don't need it. But if you're using it with a glowy foundation, that is um, amazing. So I'm yeah. also gonna go in on my forehead, starting in the middle of my face. We tend to have more to cover in the center of our faces. Mm -hmm. So I tend to like to start in the center so that it kind of, is a little bit more natural looking. And then I'm just going to pull outward. And then I'm, you're noticing that I'm not putting this foundation under my eye. There's no need to put foundation under your eye where you're already gonna add concealer. You don't need to layer. There's just okay. no need for it. Perfect. So if, say you do have acne scars and you really I wanna do. like, where? Right here. I do. I, I have acne scars. Okay. Well, like, it's the camera. I do. I definitely have acne scars. I had very, very bad acne and I did Accutane and everything. So oh yeah. Oh my gosh, like, you would yeah. never know. It looks amazing. Yeah. I used to get really hormonal breakouts around my mouth, mm -hmm. uh, especially in my twenties. I was like, what the heck? Why is this still happening to me? Um, but what you do with the brush or with a beauty blender is you're going to stipple. Stippling is, are these little padding motions. That is how you build the beautiful coverage and it's so easy to do, and it just builds it really nice for you. I'm gonna pull my hair actually back with the headband so I can have better access to my face. There we go. So I'm gonna get close so you can see, just with this foundation, what the difference is in coverage between this side of my face and this side of my face. It's still drying. It is wow. gonna dry to a beautiful matte, but it just gives you instant coverage without really working that hard at all. That's so amazing. let's go into the other side, and we're gonna work out and down, always, laying down those little 
peachy fuzz hairs. And is it a preference for a blender or fingers or a brush? Like how do people know what the right foundation application method is for them? I think that I, it just depends. Like I, I, the reason why I like this brush is when I'm doing it at home, I can get a full face on and like, 20 seconds right mm -hmm. it's just so fast it kind of works just like a magic eraser like i'm going i'm taking my time now but normally like if i did it i would just be like like this like this and done um i use a beauty blender on clients because i can, feel like i can really perfect and i don't have to go that fast mm -hmm. um but this brush is definitely for someone who is not messing around who wants to just get it done get it on and then um you know move on with their lives i like to take it down my neck you'll notice your most people have a lighter neck than they do a face and then mm -hmm. a deeper forehead. We're not just one color all the way through. Right. So when I'm working on a client, if I'm on set, if I'm doing campaign makeup, then I actually usually use two foundations. But for most people, you're not going to buy two foundations. Um, so we'll bring a little bit back of sculpting with some bronzer or with our contour powder. Mm -hmm. But I first just want to really make sure that I'm covered up everywhere that I wanted and I think that we're good. Um, but yeah, so you always want to extend it down your neck. And then one trick, I swear to you, something I see all the time is that people forget to put on foundation right here. What? So yeah, it happens all the time. I think that like, because you don't see any like texture or anything right here, um, I think that people just forget about it. And um, you just really want to make sure that you blend all the way through. Also, if you have a special event, make sure that you put foundation on your ears. I learned that the hard way when I was doing red carpet makeup on a celebrity, and I won't say because then you're gonna Google it and look at it, and that's my personal shame. But make sure that if you're gonna be photographed that you put a little bit of foundation on your ears. Your ears can usually get a little red um, if you're excited or you know, and any kind of like emotion, people show yeah. it sometimes on their chest, on their ears, on their nose. So I've just literally a little, never thought about that. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's just one of those things. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with our three-in-one concealer. This concealer, honestly, in all the years that I have been doing makeup, yes, here, let me push so you can see it. Um, this is the best one I've ever used and it's, I'm not just saying that because I work for the brand and it's double the amount. So it's double the amount than most concealers on the market, which is amazing. Like I've never gone through a full one. Like. Yeah, I, I just thought when I, I get when I opened these, I was like, wait a second, this is the foundation and this is the concealer. Yes. It's, it's huge in comparison. It really, it, really is. It's massive. And what I love is that it has a doe foot. So mm -hmm. honestly, sometimes there's been times where I've used this as foundation because it's so full coverage and I wanted to be like really full coverage on set. Um, or I was traveling and I didn't, you know, I yeah. hate checking my makeup because I always feel like someone's gonna be like oh, the perfect makeup bag and then <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. That's so amazing. what I like to do is I like so to what did you call this. This is a doe foot. A little doe, doe foot. Yeah. Cute. I've never heard that before. She's it doesn't look like a little doe foot, like a little yeah. walking around. <laughs> a little Bambi, you know. Um, <laughs> I just love to match one to two shades lighter. Okay. Um, one to two shades lighter is going to bring lift to your face. Um, and what that means is just always remember that light brings out, you're going to pull forward with anything lighter and you're mm -hmm. going to push back with anything darker. Ah, okay. A little bit of color theory. You're always going to want to remember, but because this is so pigmented, you have to use so little, make sure you're just going up first into the corner of your eye. Cause we tend to get women, you know, and men tend to get dark right here. So, so I'm just going to give my pull it out. Um, is what if there's kind of a glob on the end? Do I wipe that off? 100% wipe okay, that off. We don't need it. You're kind of on the inside. Yes, okay. exactly. Like we don't need, we don't need that. Just need that. Okay. Just too and much. Then where do I put it? And then, so just right here. Okay. And then we're also going to do on the outer corner of our eye. This is going to give us a little lift. It's mm -hmm. going to bring this cheekbone out. Perfect. And I'm just going to put it a little bit on the other side and then we'll just get in with a beauty blender and then we can always go back. The problem is I've seen a lot of people go on and just do a full triangle of light, which is great technique where you want, you know, to have a light where you want it. But yeah. this product blends so easily, you'll have way too much product. Okay. So now one of my tricks when I'm blending my concealer is you want to make sure that you're not just looking in the mirror like this. You want to actually look upward 
because that's the way you'll get into all those tiny little creases under your eye. So you wanna go back and forth and then I'm going up and I'm going into that temple and little that's dabbing motions. motions. Yeah, little dabbing motions, making sure you're, you have a damp beauty blender and I'm just really pushing it into the corner and then I'm taking it down. So I am taking it down around my nose. It ends up being the same areas. So you still get that triangle of light, but you don't have to use so much product. You will waste it. Um, it'll get everywhere and we don't want it to get in your eye. So let's do the other eye. So I'm gonna take it down and over. And what's cool is it's such full coverage, but it's not cakey, it's not drying, and it's definitely uh, going to stay on all day. This is really long wearing and you don't need a conceal like a corrector sometimes like you'll use stuff and you're like oh i think i can still see some purple through i'm gonna add a little bit more right here on me because mama was up late last night so i have a little extra to cover so i'm just pressing 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 going downward and then it's looking pretty good. So when I look, I take, I like to look back like at myself and like not look too close to the mirror. Right. And, see. and so talk to me about creasing again, because that is a big thing yes. with, with under eyes with my concealer. I just see creases left and right. And so, so you, yes. you mentioned not using too much product. You also mentioned just in the, what, what's the key? The key, the biggest thing for creasing is not using too much product. Okay. That That is when you have an excess of product, it's gonna crease every time. I don't care how long wearing or crease proof um, your product is, you just don't wanna use a lot. But also that trick of looking upward and you're moving back and forth with your beauty blender, that yes. is huge. Okay, perfect, perfect, okay. perfect. So we have used a water-based primer and now yeah. water-based foundation and a water-based concealer. So we never want to mix oil-based and water-based anything with that. Our that is so important. That is okay. so correct. Um, Perfect. And you could always, and even when you add oil on top at the end, mm -hmm. that's how sometimes you'll like want like a highlight or something that's also going to break up your foundation unless right. it's oil-based. So you just have to be really careful like with like. Um, that's nice. the most important thing. And okay. also I'm not going to be putting on powder until the very end, because what okay. happens is when you have powder, then you can't go back with anything liquid, right? So you just yeah. have to just layer like with like at first. That's, that's what really helps. Now I'm actually going to use a deeper shade of the super coverage to, um, contour with. So there's Ooh. different ways that you can contour and I'm going to go through a couple of them. So I like to use our diamond highlighter brush. And I will dip it in the doe foot of um, this shade is called Honey. And this is of your and, concealer. Yes, but you can use um, chocolate bronzer. So why don't okay. you use chocolate that. bronzer? And um, you're just first. The thing I want to talk to you about contour first before yes. we get into it. Always take a look at your face. Like, okay, mm -hmm. so my girlfriend has extremely high cheekbones and she has a very narrow face. Mm -hmm. So we cannot contour her at all because okay. she just needs a little bit of light. She doesn't need contour. It's gonna make her look, it's almost gonna look like too angular, like give you like Cruella DeVille. Like it, it just like won't look right, right? Yeah. Yep. So for me, first of all, also, you do not have to contour. This is just if you want to. This is just if it makes you feel empowered and fun. And that's what I like. I like to bring out, I like to think of contouring as bringing out my best features. Yeah. So I really like my cheekbones to stand out. So mm -hmm. what I like to do is I like to start on the bone. So above okay. the ear, so higher than you think. And I'm just going to go and I'm going to add a little bit like this on both sides, but you're never blending down with, with uh, contour, you're always blending up. So I'm just gonna press up into that cheekbone. And you don't need a lot. I'm using more than I normally would so that you can see where I'm putting it. Perfect. And then what I like to do is I like to go back with a beauty blender. And I don't like to take it any further than the corner of the color of my iris, like where that is. Kind of mess with my lighting. I think this is better. Okay. Let me see. Oh, pretty. I love that. Yes. Is that too much? I feel like it's too, too much. much. This too is much. good. Okay. This is good. So you want to take a uh, brush that's clean yeah. and you want to dust it, but always dusting upward. That's like the important part. And if all else fails, if it's too much, 
we can always just take like a little bit of the foundation that we have on our beauty blender and just tap it. Mm -hmm. And I find that that really helps too. I am new to contouring. So I'm yeah, if you're not class with everybody. This is so, I'm not exactly the expert. And then for here. you, I would take off this part right here. Like we would just take take your beauty blender and just take it back. Okay. Because we don't want to bring it. Yeah. Like just I would use yeah. The, just tap 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 tap. Perfect. Beautiful. And then I also. Uh, if you have a small petite forehead, do not con try even contouring your forehead. Um, I like to make mine look a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to take that same contour color and I'm just going to go in and start going around my forehead. So you make yeah. it look smaller by contouring the top? Yes. Yes, it does. So if you feel like you want to make your forehead look a little bit smaller, if that's something that empowers you and makes you feel good, definitely just try uh, around. See, um, I have this big, I have a very large brain and this big, beautiful brain and this big, beautiful head of mine. So. <laughs> That's what I always tell them. Like, I've just got a huge brain. That's what it is. But, um, but no, I've got a larger, I've got a larger head and I'm proud of my large head, but that is interesting. Absolutely. Perfect. It, so I feel the same way. I'm like, I have a, a five head. So mm -hmm. let's just do a little bit of contouring on that. I just have always wanted a small forehead. It's like the weird things that we trick ourselves into. It's right. not important, but yeah. it's just it's just fun um, uh, to be able to take control of like, you know, I just feel like makeup is such a great way to express yourself. And it it's like, I like fun. Yeah, I it's like to look fun. fun every day. And then I'm also, especially when I'm on camera, I also like to take it around my jawline. So let me, it's easier to show. Mm -hmm like right here. And that just gives you that instantly snatched jawline. This is great for, you know, Thanksgiving's coming up. <laughs> I swear I can gain 10 pounds just from Thanksgiving and I'm okay with it because I love me some mashed potatoes. So I'll just give myself a little more contour. That's amazing. And I feel like ma mashed potatoes are like the ultimate Thanksgiving food. I don't even care about turkey. Just give me some mashed potatoes. Do you like gravy exactly. mashed potatoes? I do. Mm -hmm. Yes. I like all the gravy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. And then I'm just going to do a little bit on my nose as well. Um, so I'm just going to take a little brush. And what I like to do is starting from where the corner of my brow is, think about this as like the closer the lines are together that I create on my nose, the closer the lines the more uh, slender your nose is gonna look. This is definitely just if you feel like doing this, you do not have to do this. All noses are beautiful. So I'm just gonna go a little bit closer so you'll see that line. And then I, on camera especially, I like to push my nose back. I don't want it to look long on camera. So I just put some on the end and then I do like a little kind of sweep. So this isn't blended, but you can kind of get the gist of where we're headed. And if you ever feel like you put too much, that's okay. We'll just go back with our beauty blender that has like a little bit of our foundation on it. And this is just, you know, this isn't like your everyday makeup. This is like your right. campaign. Like, well, I mean, to be honest, it's my everyday makeup. Well, but yeah, you're the global beauty drafter for a beauty brand. Exactly. <laughs> it's just like, I just like to give people the option to you know create looks that they want to create or try new things and it's so fun and mm -hmm. then what you'll do is you'll just take a little bit of highlighter we'll get into highlighter in a minute but the highlighter will just go right down the center and i personally don't like finger? what was that you're using your finger for this yeah i like to use my finger so just mm -hmm. in the middle i don't bring it all the way down i know a lot of people like a little highlighter on the end i personally don't because i feel like it makes my nose look longer so mm -hmm. i just don't do that you just have to find out what works for you and which highlighter are you using so i am using our our new uh, born this way highlighters what i love about mm -hmm. this is there's really a highlighter for like every occasion so the middle is like a really soft radiance that you can put all over your face. So you can set your makeup with it. It'll give you a little radiance. Then we have uh, Dazzle, which is this one. This is like really super sparkly. Like I'll show you. Very oh, wow. sparkly, pretty. Mm -hmm. And then this is the glow. This is like your Instagram highlighter. See it from space, like really pretty 
Awesome. Wow. So now that I have done that, I'm going to get into starting to like set under my eyes a little bit. Yes. And then we can get into highlighting and maybe even putting a little bronzer on. But I do feel what I liked about using um, the uh, Born This Way concealer for, for contour is that it has some warmth to it. Excuse yeah. Me. So I like it kind of like bronzes and, and contours at the same time. Yeah. So it's like one, one step. So I'm going to use our Coco Contour Palette. Okay. This palette, you can see how much I love it and use it because hello, I'm like hitting pan on like three things. It's so I embarrassing, but we have to use it all the way through. We can't be wasteful. So and I'm going to use this one in front of me as well. Then two facing oh, that palette too. What do you have for actually? Okay. So what you can use to, to set under your eyes is mm -hmm. the highlighter. Do you have the Born This Way highlighter? Um, I've got one. No, I don't have the Born This Way highlighter. I've got the powder you have um i've got the born this way powder and what shade i've got golden beige and light beige um okay so let's not set under your eyes because i really like to set with like a little bit lighter and i don't think those okay. are light enough okay but um and you don't really need to like this the product is self-setting so you don't yeah, have to set it but, on its own right now honestly it doesn't yeah. look at all it feels light Perfect. So okay. if you do set, you just want to make sure you move in and out. I do not set over here because okay. I don't want to bring, I want to keep this looking a little bit more skin like, and I'm going to put um, highlighter over it. And I feel like the highlight adheres better with mm -hmm. when you're not putting it over powder. Yeah. So let's do a little bit of highlight. This is like mm -hmm. my favorite step. <laughs> I am going to go in um, with I actually am going to be really strategic. I'm going to use an eyeshadow brush Ooh. and I'm going to use the glow from mm -hmm. the highlighter palette, our Born This Way highlighter palette. And I'm just mm -hmm. going to start on the top of my cheekbones. Yep. And what I like to do, the reason why I like to put highlighter on first before blush is because I love when highlighter comes through blush and it makes your blush look like really glowy. Now you don't have to use a lot, just be strategic. Here's also something that's really cool about highlighter. If you have textured skin, say that you have maybe some acne scars down here, um, you always wanna look for the area that doesn't have texture because you never wanna put highlighter over texture, over scars, over um, anything, maybe like fine lines that you're getting. You really yeah. wanna be careful. But if you do your foundation and then you're strategic with highlighter, it instantly makes it look like you have perfect skin. People will go, oh, their eyes will go right where the light is right? Like you're, yeah. they're not going to see anything else. It's like when I get a pimple, I wear red lipstick because I know people <laughs> are going to look at my lips and they're not going to look at the pimple. And my mom taught me very early on, never point out your flaws. Like yeah. people, you know what I mean? Like don't tell people they won't see it. Don't people only see it. No one sees it. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. So um, that's my favorite uh, little life hack. And it really helped me when I had acne because I would just, you know, put my highlighter on it. Like, oh my God, yeah. you have such beautiful skin and I was like <laughs> thank you <laughs> exactly I'm like oh it's I was just born this way you know um okay so I like to do that and then one of my little tricks is I also like to to when I smile so smile and see where the light hits you mine hits me right here yep I just do a little right where the light hits I can't do a ton because I do have texture right here but I can do it right where it hits and I just think that that's really pretty. And then also something that JLo taught me, you know, not, she, not personally, I wish. And that sounded so like, I know JLo, I don't. Um, but she all taught us this, her and Scott Barnes on the red carpet, like to have this beautiful, wherever the light's hitting you above your brow, you also want to add a little light right there. You don't have to do your full forehead. You know, you just want it to hit right where the light hits. So I'm just going to add just a little bit right there. I'm going to give myself a little more. And then I personally like to do a little, a little highlight on my Cupid's bow. Oh. Cause I like it to, I like it to show. I think Cupid's bows are so pretty. It's yeah. like my, mama, my mom always used to say it's where the angels pushed you out of heaven. Cute. Isn't that cute? cute. I like that. I like that a lot. Oh yeah. Okay. That's really like that really lit highlight everything everything's beautiful now let's add some blush okay so i like to use a really fluffy blush 
Okay. And I'm going to go in. I'm gonna, a huge blush brush. I know it's huge. I know. I know. This is a personal preference, you guys. You don't have to do this. Okay. But I like to do blush a little bit higher on my cheekbones because yeah. I like it to look lifted. Yeah. Um, one thing that I have learned is if you just do blush right here when you smile, when you stop smiling, it droops. Okay. So you don't want droopy blush and also a good rule of thumb is to keep it about two inches away from the corner of your nose to keep it away from the nose and so if i have this palette this is the natural face palette which how do i know which blush to use because this is i would use both i love both of those i would do a dip of each but okay. just know that um just know that that blush is very pigmented so maybe tap off or like press it into your hand first okay because those blushes are very pigmented right. and then i'm just going to start kind of pressing it in. Um, what I love about uh, like blush that has a little bit of glow to it, the more that you blend it, the shinier it gets. It's like buffing. The more you buff, mm. look at your cheekbones, just like pulling forward. That, is yeah. giving me, that so gives me so much fun. life. I love um, it. So I like to wear a lot of blush. Blush tends to be one of those things that kind of soaks into your face first and you'll notice like sometimes by the end of the day like you're like oh my gosh I, am i even like wearing any like where did it go yeah so i would I, i'll always add like a little bit more than i think i'm gonna need um mm -hmm. two fingers away from my nose rule yeah you can or i mean but there's listen there's no rules with makeup so do what makes you happy these are just right. like things that i do on set and um, a lot of people right now, it's very trendy uh, to do blush on your nose. A lot of people like the way that looks. They'll just put like a little here, a little bit on your forehead. Um, it just brings it everything all together and just looks really nice. Um, one of the last things that I like to do when I'm finished with my makeup, mm -hmm. but uh, is go back with a clean brush. Okay. This is one of the best tips you can ever do. But um, before I do that, I just feel like I need a little more bronzer. So let me just put a little bit more bronzer on. So talk to me about the difference between contouring and bronzing. And I know you said not Perfect. everybody needs the contour, but like, because I only used my yeah. bronzer with the contouring. I haven't used it outside of that. That is honestly the best question. So contouring goes underneath the bone structure. Okay. So contouring, you're going to want to use something that has, um, it has to be matte and okay. you, it needs to be usually a little bit more on the gray side because we're okay. trying to create shadows. Okay. And so that's what, what uh, contour is, but bronzing hits you right where the sun hits you. So it, it, on your forehead, it would, it would be in the same place that you would contour, but but it would be on top of your cheekbones. Mm -hmm. So when you're bronzing, you want to go over your nose where the sun hits you, over your cheeks, you know, right where the sun would naturally just kiss your face. And it just gives you warmth. So many times when you put on your foundation, I feel like it just completely, it gives you a fresh canvas, but it's completely yeah. one color. And we're not just right. one color, right? right? So we want to look like, even though we have like flawless, you know, flawless skin now, but we want to look like we're not wearing makeup. And that's definitely what bronzer does. So um, I was I, able to use this because I only have one shade of foundation, right? So I was able to use the chocolate matte bronzer in order to contour. But then yes. when I'm actually using the bronzer, I'm using Sunny Honey and Tropic Like It's Hot from the Natural Face Palette. So you're holding up the Natural Face Palette and this is such an incredible palette for someone who just wants everything all in one. Yes, so you get two bronzers, <laughs> two bronzers, two blushes and two gorgeous highlights. So this that, this is one of my favorite palettes for that reason. I absolutely love this palette. Um, but yeah. also the chocolate bronzer, this smells like chocolate. It has real cocoa powder in it. Sometimes it gets in your mouth and it tastes like chocolate amazing for contouring for bronzing it comes in three shades like it's just we're we're really well known for our bronzer products so you have a lot to choose from it's totally just based on personal preference fantastic okay so let us uh, blend our whole face so now take a clean brush clean brush and i want you to marry all the products so just start going in and start blending everything together this is great for if you're new to makeup, even if you're not, because I do it every day, but if you have maybe a harsh line somewhere, you never want to see where anything starts or stops. Like you just want it to be cohesive. It should look like a beautiful cloud. Like everything should just be super, super blended yeah, and beautiful. I hear, I hear about baking. Is that what we're doing right now? Are we baking? No, 
But no, you know what's cool? Okay, so baking was uh, basically drag queens are the ones who we have to thank for this because they are so incredible at doing their makeup. Mm -hmm. And what you do when you bake is you take powder and you set it on after you've concealed, you set it underneath your eye and you let it sit for 10 minutes. And what happens is your body, the warmth from your body and the powder kind of melt together and they make your concealer bulletproof, which is awesome. And there's a time and a place for it. Um, the time would be if you are going to be in something, a place that's super humid and you know, you're going to be sweating and you know yeah. that you're, you just want to lock it down. Maybe like on your wedding day, um, never bake with HD powder, HD powder. will that's when you see the celebrities that get pictures taken of them. And it looks like they have like white underneath their eye. Yeah. Um, so you, so yeah, you never want to bake with okay. an, an HD powder. Um, but it's not something you need to, need to do every day. Even if you just take a little bit of powder and you just uh, uh, set where you need it, that's going to be much more effective. Um, I think baking can go wrong a lot of times. If you have dry skin, do not bake. You're going to feel like your face is going to crack in half. Okay. Um, and just on your every day, you don't have to. It's just, it's our concealers are so full coverage and beautiful and they stay yeah. put like they're long wearing. You don't have to do that. But if you wanted to, you definitely can. And I like to use a damp beauty blender. I'll push it into the powder and I'll push it under my eye, just let it sit for at least, you know, I would say like at least like five to seven minutes, 10 minutes would be best and then dust it away. And then dust it away. Okay, so that exactly. is the thing. Perfect. perfect, exactly. So now how I like to uh, finish off my look. So if you want it to be matte, you don't have to do this step, but I like to have a little bit of a glow. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna finish off with our three in one hangover spray yep. and I'm not gonna spray the center of my face at all. It's, well, it's just I, the side. If we didn't use any powder, would we use powder after this or before? Or do we not use? How do you know if you use powder? Honestly, I used a little powder under my eyes, but because this is 24 hour long wear, yeah. this foundation doesn't move. You don't have to use powder I don't feel with it. Like at you need powder at all. I'm just used to using no. powder at the end. It doesn't move. I think when we were creating it in product development, we would put it on in the morning, and at the end of the day, we we're like, okay, we know we have a winner because it has not changed. Like, even though I'm like someone who puts my hand on my face or yeah. I try not to, but it happens. Um, it just doesn't move. Like it is so locked down. It doesn't mm -hmm. even separate in your oily areas. So it is so incredible. I cannot wait for people to try it. I really believe in this formula. And I, I think the biggest thing is it feels so lightweight and so undetectable and it has amazing ingredients. You guys, all of our born this way products have coconut water and Alpine Rose and hyaluronic acid. So really good, good for you skin ingredients. It's not just another foundation. That's just foundation. We always yeah. put good for you skin ingredients in there. So amazing. Very excited about this. I cannot wait for people to try it. And I love oh. that as a dry skin person that I can still wear this comfortably because usually matte foundations I can't wear because my skin's too dry. Um, yay. So I'm just going to finish this off. I'm going to shake up my three in one and I'm just going to spray the outside of my face. What this does is one, it makes your skin look like skin. Like it doesn't look like I'm wearing foundation anymore. It just looks like, well, I mean, it does. It looks like I'm wearing like highlighter and blush, but it just makes it look very, very natural and helps to, uh, to set it, even though it doesn't need help. It's just kind of like something that I like to do as an artist. I feel like it looks very finished. And then is let's that, talk. Is that the key thing right at the end? Because I, what I, I know people like the no makeup, makeup look, or yes. they just want to look more natural. But, you know, I, I feel more confident potentially. Like I personally have always had acne. I've got some mask knee situations happening right now that's like really bad. So I want to wear foundation a lot of days, but I don't want it to look like I'm wearing cakey foundation. So exactly. is setting with the spray afterwards that really helps? 100%. I mean, it's beautiful by itself, but setting with it really helps. And also this foundation is non-comedogenic. So we made sure that it wouldn't be clogging your pores. Yes. It's so important to check on those kind of things. Like yeah. you, you just you don't want to make a situation worse. So, yeah. and then also removing your makeup at the end of the day, you guys do not sleep in your makeup. You, ha I don't care how tired or how many cocktails you've had. Like one of my life hacks is I always have makeup wipes. I, I wash my face every night religiously, double cleanse. But if you can't get out of bed, reach over, grab your makeup wipes, at least use a makeup wipe. Minimum. Take this minimum. Minimal. Yes. What's your favorite makeup wipe? Honestly, I use the Neutrogena ones. I love them. I've used them for years. Okay. I've, and, and also Target, the Target brand makes a really good one. I never go for like the expensive ones. I think yeah. Neutrogena is great. 
Great. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So good. Mm -hmm. um, so now I'm going to go in with a Q-tip. This is one of my little tricks. So if you have like a little bit of foundation left on your lip, mm -hmm. I like to go around on my lips like this. And then I like to use a Q-tip to actually make my lips look even bigger. So I'll lick it. And then I go above the water line, like above the lip line. And I take it a little bit higher. And because there's foundation around it, it makes it look like it's part of my lip. That's just like one of my little fun tricks. Oh, that's amazing. And then I'm going to apply our new, have you tried our new lip injection lip glosses? No, I've not. I have all, I have four colors here. So I have with me paid off here. Oh, I love that shade, but I love wifey for lifey. Do you have that? Or glossy and bossy? I've got pretty pony, um, <gasps> wifey for lifey. And then I have stars are aligned. You should do wifey for lifey or paid off. Okay. I'm going to okay. do glossy and bossy because it's the okay. truth. <laughs> and these, so you know what I love? So our original lip injection, you can feel that tingle mm -hmm. um, and you can feel that it's working. But a lot of people, maybe they don't want to feel that and they want it to be super glossy. So this has a very cooling effect. So you still get the plumping, but it's very cooling and it's our shiniest gloss yet. It's just so so, we're so not wearing any lip liner. We're not wearing any no. lipstick. We're just doing this. And um, how do I make sure I don't put on too much and that it like kind of pools? You're asking the wrong person because I love all the lip gloss. I <laughs> put on, that's what I love about this dope foot. It's like you can hit it literally from the front to back. And it is, you don't have to re-diff a million times, which is nice. Um, the pooling thing, I would say make sure Obviously, I didn't talk about this before we started, but you guys always wash your hands before you put your makeup on. Um, and then I do, it's not sexy. Maybe it is for some people, but I just do the, and it takes off anything that would get mm -hmm. on your teeth, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, it's, it's a tried and true method. That's such oh, a that pretty looks plus. beautiful on you. I love Thank it. Thank you. I love it. I love this. Um, okay, we have some questions that we're getting from the audience. So sure. you're going to have the coolest job in the whole world. Thank you so much. Um, how did you get your start in beauty? How do you become the global beauty director of a brand? Oh my gosh. Well, I always, I was like one of those like freaky weird kids that always knew. As soon as I found out that there was a job where you could put makeup on all day on other people, like my mom sold Mary Kay like back in the day and I was obsessed with going through all of her makeup and I was lucky to have parents that were very supportive. Um, and Back when I was a makeup artist, like when I first started out at like 18, no one would tell their secrets. There was no YouTube, like you, ever, it was a very secretive world. Like you had to like assist someone and watch everything they did. And like, it was just very hard to learn back then. Yeah. And, and um, yeah, so I started behind the counter. I got a job behind the counter and started working. I just wanted to touch like every single type of skin, every shade range of skin. And I think that if you want to be a makeup artist, working behind the counter is the best thing that you can so do like because it's Sephora it's, right now. Someone could yes. go to Sephora and that would be a great way to get their start in makeup. Yes. Okay. Sephora, any, any type of behind the counter mm -hmm. where you can get your hands on experience because when I, I, you know, I've done a lot of red carpet or a movie or whatever I'm doing, I always feel like I'm faster than other people who haven't been behind the counter because mm -hmm. they didn't get the crazy right. experience where it's like turn and burn. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I just think I have the luckiest, I am the luckiest girl in the world because when you get to do someone's makeup and make them feel the, like the best version of themselves, like there is no better high for me than when I'm doing someone's makeup who maybe isn't feeling great about themselves, maybe never knew how to do makeup. And there's a, this moment where they pick up the mirror and they see themselves for the first time that is, and, and they feel, I can see how beautiful they feel. Sometimes they like tear up. It is, I, it is the best feeling in the entire world. And and that's why I say makeup is such a powerful tool. Yeah. Use it as a tool. Don't use it to cover yourself. Use yeah. it to show who you are. Use it to empower yourself. That is what makeup does. Amazing. And what is one beauty product uh, people are asking that you can't live without? Okay, well, uh, Better Than Sex Mascara. We we swear by Better Than Sex Mascara. It's the number one selling mascara on like the planet. <laughs> Basically, prestige mascara in the U.S., um, this mascara is nice because you don't have to have long lashes for it to work on you. You know, mm -hmm. you can have a little bit wimpy. I have very straight lashes. They always are like down. So I have to make sure I curl them. And then I always had a hard time finding mascara that would keep the curl up. Mm -hmm. So this wand will grab every last little 
tiny little baby lash and just make it look the most thick and beautiful it can be. It, it's it's so volumizing, it's so long wearing, it's su super dark black. And if I'm not gonna wear anything besides sunscreen, I never leave the house without sunscreen. Yeah. Um, I will throw on some mascara and some lip gloss and I will feel I will feel pretty because I feel like lash, your eyes are the window to your soul, right? Like, so as long as you, I feel like my lashes are on, I'm like, I'm good, I look great. I'm like, let's do this. Oh, oh my gosh. Well, Elise, this has been so much fun. I have loved putting on my makeup with you. I feel beautiful and I'm so excited about all these products and all the tips and tricks that I learned today. So thank you so much. We have had such a great day already today. We have so many more amazing sessions, including Jared is going to be on later, which is going to be so fun. So everybody, my favorite. yes, it's going to be really amazing. So everyone stay tuned. Be sure. How can we follow? Can we follow you on Instagram or how can we find you? on the internet. Yes, thank you. So my Instagram is just Elise Renault. It's it's so many vowels. It's just E L Y S E R E N E A U. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. It's a very oh. French name. I love it. Well, follow yes. Elise Renault on Instagram and stay tuned. We have so many more fun sessions happening today. I'm so happy you're all here at Beauty School. I hope you're all learning a lot and having a lot of fun and stay tuned. Lots lots more fun to come. Thank you so much, Elise. Thank you. You're my star student. You look beautiful. Oh, thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. That was so fun. Huge thank you to Windsor and Elise for joining us, and especially, of course, to Elise for sharing her amazing expertise. If you want to recreate Elise's look, be sure to check out our What's In My Beauty Bag feature on beautyschool.hercampus.com for all of Elise's favorite Too Faced products. Plus, don't forget to enter our giveaway on the Her Campus Instagram and let us know what you think of today's moments using hashtag beautyschool on social media. Our next tutorial comes from Beauty School professor and Influence Her Collective member, Jessica Lee, a content creator and entrepreneur who started her Instagram page and YouTube channel as a diary to document her college journey at UCLA. She enjoys curating fashion and beauty looks as well as sharing her life experiences with her over half a million social followers. Here with her best no makeup makeup look featuring the Born This Way matte foundation Please join me in welcoming Jessica. Welcome to Too Faced Beauty School. My name is Jessica Carrie Lee and I'm so excited to be sharing my tips and tricks to the ultimate no makeup makeup look. This is perfect for a low maintenance Zoom call. Let's get started. The first step that I actually like to do is I actually like to use bronzer before my foundation when I'm doing a really natural makeup look just because I think it actually blends like a lot better. I know it's pretty crazy. You can always do it after your foundation, but for me, I found it looks really natural under. So I'm going to start with this little Too Faced bronzer right here, and this is in the shade Chocolate Soleil. So it's like their long wear matte bronzer. It's a great all natural like neutral brown bronzer. I am always looking for bronzers that are more natural in tone versus like red or like a terracotta like orange color just because I think they blend into your face a lot better and sometimes they can show up a little bit orange especially if you're wearing like not much makeup. I actually like to put it right below my cheekbone right here. I know a lot of people like to do it in a three and I still do the whole like three shape but for me, I realized that when I blend, it can kind of tend to get dragged like lower into my cheekbone and I don't want that because it's just gonna bring my face down. So I'm actually gonna apply it like right where my cheekbone starts like dip back into my side of my face. That's where I wanna put it. I'm just going to follow up with the same bronzer and I'm actually going to do a slight nose contour. Again, you can totally do this after your foundation, but for me, I've noticed that it blends a lot better into my entire skin if I just do it before. And I'm going to use this little smaller brush here to contour my nose. Again, we're just trying to highlight what we already have, so I'm going to be adding some darker shades on the side of my nose and keeping the middle without any bronzer.
Okay, so I know this looks crazy right now, but I'm just going to blend it all up and it'll look a lot better. So I'm going to go in with this Born This Way Matte 24 Hour Long Lasting Foundation. So this will stay put literally all day. And I know if I'm looking for a really quick and simple no makeup makeup look to blast me through my entire Zoom day, I know this will do the trick. So I'm going in with the shade Vanilla here and I'm just going to mostly focus it on any problem areas that I have. So that's mostly the middle of my face, like the T-zone, under my eyes, and any other previous acne marks. I've noticed that this foundation is really brightening despite being matte. So I like to focus it on the center of my face to make sure I get that bright and sculpted look even if I'm going for that no makeup look. I'm using the chocolate brownie pencil in deep brown to fill in the sparse parts of my brows. For the eyes, I'm going to keep it really simple and I'm just going to put basically a neutral tone to just bring out the natural shadows I already have in my eye and you guys can do it to mimic whatever eye shape you guys have. So I'm going to go in with the Too Faced Peach Palette. Guys, this is one of my favorite OG palettes. It smells amazing, literally just like peaches and if you're a sucker for like sweet scents, you're going to love this one. Then I'm going to go in with this shade Puree right here. Go in with a fluffy brush and basically outline the entire lid of my eye just to give me a little bit of dimension. I really like to bring out the corner of my eye to really open up my eyes and make them look even bigger. So I'm going to put this dark brown shade into the corner. You can also go in with mascara if you want a little more definition to your eyes. I'm using the Too Faced Damn Girl Mascara as I've used this for so long and it's because it is super volumizing and it doesn't run which is amazing. Alright, we are almost done. The next step that I have is highlighter, one of my favorite steps of my entire makeup routine. Just because, I don't know, it adds a little bit of fun and a little pop of color. I'm using the Too Faced Highlighter in Diamond Fire and guys, wait until you see this packaging comes with this little knob at the front that you push open and voila. <laughs> it is literally so pretty. It looks like a jewel and it's one of the favorite highlighters in my entire collection. So I'm going to put a little bit of this on my nose, my cheekbones, and under my eyebrows. Alright guys, so I think that's my cue to sign off, but I had the most amazing time creating this no makeup makeup look for you guys. All the products that I use can be found at Too Faced and they have a lot more tutorials coming out so you guys can figure out how to slay your face. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to be friends, you can find me at Jessica Carrie Lee on all social platforms. Bye! Hi everyone, it's Gina, her campus's beauty editor. I'm back again for our next trend report. So now we are going to be talking about very cool viral online looks that you need to know about in the nail and manicure space. First up, I need to show you the most innovative metallic nail hack that I found on TikTok. So these DIY chrome nails are achieved by taking an empty gum wrapper, um, really any color that you want, whatever color your gum came in, whether it's blue or silver. You want to separate the foil away from the paper so that you only have the foil strip of the gum wrapper left. Then you're going to take the foil strip and press it really tightly onto your nail um, to kind of like scratch out the shape of your nail bed. You're going to remove any excess that doesn't naturally fit the, your nail shape um, so that you're left with something that essentially looks like a perfect manicure. If you want to keep this on for a long time, you can put a little bit of top coat on it. It will come off easily with nail polish remover after. But when finished, I think that these look ultra cool, so edgy, and they're so easy to do. It's such a useful technique to have on hand, especially in these times when we might not always be able to make it to the nail salon for our usual appointment and it looks a little bit more elevated than just a simple day-to-day -day lacquer that you might be using. Next, let's talk about e-girl manicures. So e-girls are an internet Gen Z subculture that's been popularized on TikTok and their looks are inspired by skater culture, anime, K-pop, hip-hop, and early 2000s and even 1990s fashion. Let it be known that e-girls literally have the coolest manicure trends that you've ever seen. So for an example, today I have pulled this incredible photo of Cherub Renaissance Nails, the latest statement look to take the street style world by storm. Other e-girl manicures include art of kitschy butterflies or the signature blue butterfly emoji that you might know from texting, flames, cherries, strawberries, 
cloud, cow print, and sunflowers. I can't tell you why this imagery is so cool and extremely online, but it just is and I love it. These manicures tend to pair nicely with oversized band shirts and high-waisted jeans and you're just gonna love them. I highly recommend paying more attention to the nails the next time you are scrolling on TikTok and looking for some very cool, trendy inspiration. For our final nail trend of the day, let's talk about negative space manicure design. So negative space nails are really exactly what they sound like. These designs capitalize on using your natural nail and natural nail color and only adding some complementing details of nail polish or special effects. So they're often abstract and geometric and these actually originated as an expansion of the French tip design which really capitalizes on using your natural nail as kind of the main feature of the manicure. So I think that these look so chic. <laughs> There's nothing more impressive to me than a nicely buffed, just freshly manicured natural nail. Um, negative space nails look really good on both short and long nail lengths, which is a huge win. And there are really no limits with the design. Plus, if you are just naturally bad at painting your nails like I am, um, it doesn't take a lot of skill to achieve this. Um, you can really achieve the look by just painting on a few colorful dots or adding in some artful and messy squiggles that just look kind of random and it looks really good. So I think that you are going to love this. Um, and that concludes our nail trend report. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope everyone has lots of info and is feeling super educated. I hope everyone has a wonderful day enjoying the rest of beauty school. Bye everyone. Thanks, Gina. I'm obsessed with cool manicures, so I can't wait to try some of those ideas. Next, we'll be hearing from Los Angeles transplant Savannah Lynch. An artist, blogger, and trendsetter, Savannah brings her followers along with her to dream destinations and inspires them through the evolution of her personal style. Through her attainable style, real life insights, and unedited photos, Savannah has built a community that trusts and depends on her foresight in the fashion, beauty, and lifestyle spaces. I'm so excited to see the fun eyeliner look she's put together with the Better Than Sex 24 Hour Liquid Eyeliner. Let's welcome Savannah. Hey guys, welcome to the Too Faced Beauty School. My name is Savannah and I'm going to show you how to do this fun double eyeliner look today. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is apply my foundation. I'm wearing the Born This Way Too Faced Foundation in the shade Warm Beige. Now I'm using the Natural Nudes palette. Use the maple shade right on the outside edges of my eyes and kind of just blend that into the creases. And then I use Petal just right in the center to lighten it up a little bit. I love this eyeliner so much because it has such a thin tip so it goes on so smoothly and it's very forgiving. First I just start off with a natural wing and I make it very thin that way I have room to make it thicker if I want to at the end. And I just connect my bottom eyeliner and my top eyeliner right in the inside corner to make a little point. I also didn't finish off my bottom eyeliner. I just brought it in about a quarter of the way on the inside of my eye. Now I'm making the second wing and I'm just going to start off by following the crease of my eye and connecting that with the first wing that I made. And you can make this as thin or thick as you want. Make sure not to do it too low so you don't lose it inside the crease of your eye. You wanna be able to see it. So you want it right like on that brow bone. Now I'm using the Too Faced Damn Girl Mascara. 
I love this mascara because it gives you so much volume and it doesn't smudge underneath your eyes. Now for my brows, I am wearing the Too Faced Chocolate Brownie Brow Pencil and I'm wearing the shade Deep Brown and I just brush out my brows and fill them in. Now this was kind of a last minute decision, but I thought it would be fun to kind of lighten up my brow bone using the shade Swan. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you guys had fun learning how to do this look. And do not forget to follow me and Too Faced on Instagram. I would love to see any photos of you guys doing this look. So don't forget to tag me. And I hope you guys have so much fun at the rest of this beauty school. Thank you again for watching. Love you guys. Mwah. That was incredible, Savannah. And is it just me, or is today going by a little too fast? Next, I'm thrilled to welcome Jasmine back to share more of her expertise, this time on everything you need to know when applying false eyelashes. Too Faced just launched their first ever Better Than Sex Faux Mink Falsy Lashes. These lashes are faux mink, weightless, multi-dimensional, and cruelty-free aka the full package. Welcome back, Jasmine. Hey everyone, welcome back. Are you ready to take your look from day to night and elevate those eyelashes with our new Better Than Sex Faux Mink Falsy Lashes? I am so excited to show you how to apply these amazing lashes and the best part is we offer four different lash styles for any occasion, any day of the week, any personality type, we got you covered. And I'll quickly go through them with you. This style of lash is doll eyes and this is our most natural lash. The next one is natural flirt and this one has more flair and flirtiness to it. It's a little bit more extra than our doll eyes. Our next lash is Drama Queen, just like the name. This is full of drama, and this is our thickest and most dramatic lash. And last but not least, we have our Sex Kitten. Sex Kitten is more flair, and it looks amazing with a winged eyeliner. Now, let's go ahead and start the application process. So what you will need is a mirror, better than sex liquid eyeliner, and lash scissors. The lash I will be using for today's demo is Natural Flirt, maybe because it's one of my favorite lash styles, but also it's probably one of our most in-between lashes between all four pairs. I went ahead and removed my lashes from the box. Now I'm going to remove the lashes from the actual packaging here. What you want to do is you want to place your finger at the lash band and then gently pull down to remove your lashes. Never pull from the lash hairs because you will ruin your beautiful lashes and you will become so sad. So go ahead and just always remove your lashes from the lash band. The first step is to measure and trim your lashes. So go ahead and hold your mirror up, look down into the mirror so you see your full eye, grab your lash, place it along the lash line to see where you need to trim. Then you're going to remove that and you are going to trim at the outer corners of your false lash with your lash scissors. So I'm gonna trim very, very, very little, just like tiny amount. Then I'm going to create more of a flexible band here. The nice thing about these lashes is the flexible and almost like a memory-like lash band. So it adjusts really nicely to your eye shape. It's weightless so you won't feel this like heavy, uncomfortable lash that can make your eyes feel tired or droopy. This lash band is super weightless, which I completely enjoy. So usually after this step, you would want to apply your Better Than Sex mascara, but since we already applied it, we can skip right over and go into applying the lashes onto our lash line. So I'm gonna take my lash glue, which is Duo. It has a brush tip, and I'm going to coat it along the lash band in an even amount. 
And once I do that, I will let the duo dry for about 30 seconds to a minute. The more dry the glue becomes, the easier the application will be. If the glue was a little too wet, it might not stick as easily and then it might become a little bit harder. So I would say if you're new to lashes, wait for the glue to almost be dry before applying. So now that my glue is pretty much dry, I'm going to now pop it onto my lash line. So I'm gonna look down into the mirror and place the lash um, on my lash line like so and just apply to the inner corner. So I just kind of start pressing it along the lashes and it sticks really easily. Um, it's almost like a little sticker. It just went on like no problem. And then I go in with my finger and I'll just kind of push, push it upward. And then I will pinch my natural lashes with the false lashes for it to be more blended and look more natural. Okay, now we have to finish this look with Better Than Sex Liquid Eyeliner. You wanna give her a nice little shake, so like one, two, three, you can give her a little spank if you want. It's just to help the formula get to the very, very tip of the bristles. And you are going to glide your eyeliner across your lash band just to make sure all of the glue has been properly hidden so it looks more natural and you can't tell you're wearing falsies from afar. And here is a completed look. You are all now certified sexperts. I wish you guys all the very best. Go out there, change the world, be the best version of yourself, own your pretty. And I had so much fun spending some time with you all today. Until next time. And your lashes look amazing. I feel like falsies are sometimes intimidating, but they don't have to be. Thank you for sharing those great tips. Now, Laura, Madeline, Maddie, Alexis, and our campus trendsetters are back with more insights on today's popular beauty topic. Over to you, team. All right, so I'm so loving all of these tutorials that I've seen today. I'm definitely going to be in my bathroom tonight in front of my mirror, testing out, honestly, everything that I've learned and trying out some new products. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Same. I'm not going to lie. I'm doing some damage online shopping right now, making a lot of beauty purchases. I am super excited to try out. I am right there with you. I definitely have my weekend plan sorted out, adding a ton of things to cart, and I can't wait for them to arrive. Same. I'm honestly, like, I'm so excited for tonight, but I don't want to get ahead of ourselves um, just yet because I want to talk about something else. Um, dermaplaning. 75% of the Her Campus audience said that they had never heard of dermaplaning, which honestly is like so painful for me. Okay, wait, though. I feel like I've heard the word dermaplaning and I have an idea of what it is, but can you fill me in? What's it all about? Oh my gosh, Laura, I would love to. Um, dermaplaning is honestly so great. I've been doing it for two years and it's basically the best way to exfoliate and get like the top layer um, of dead skin off your face. It oh. is wonderful. Again, yeah, I'm doing yes, yeah, so it's just a little baby razor and you just gently go over your face um, and you get like the peach fuzz off and it's wonderful. I cannot recommend it enough. Love that. I also never tried it before, but I'm curious to know afterwards, does your skin feel glowy? Like, how does your skin yeah. feel? Um, amazing. Like a 10 out of 10. Yes, you have a glow. It's wonderful because it gets that like top layer of gunk off. Um, your skin glows. It's easier for your skincare to like sink into your skin. Um, it's just truly magical. I don't know another way to describe it other than magical. Wow. I definitely want to try it. I also have not um, because I have two main concerns. One of them being, will I hurt myself? Like I can be a little clumsy, so a little worried about that. And I don't know how to say this, but like, is my hair going to grow back thicker? Am I going to have a beard? Like, oh my God. What is, like, what is, oh what is okay. next, Maddie? Okay. Here's the thing. Number one, yes, because it's a razor to your face, like you have to be careful and you just have to be gentle um, because you don't want to hurt yourself, right? Second, 
No, you are not going to grow a beard. Oh my gosh. I hope this is like, I, know. Know. I feel like other people have to have that concern too. When you think sure. It's a, the face. Totally. It's a legit concern, but like, I'm here to remind you that like, no, you are not going to grow a beard. I, like I said, I have been doing this for two years. I have literally been shaving my face once a month for two years mm-hmm. and my hair, my hair goes back exactly how it's on my face right now. Like, and exactly how it was four years ago. It does not make it grow back thicker or darker or anything. Um, no, it's just, no. You So like moral of the story, no, you are not going to grow a beard. Thank you. Now I feel a lot better. I feel like I was shamed a little bit, but I feel better. Um, <laughs> and then my other question is how often do you use a different like razor each time or like yeah. what's the, what's the, Yes. Okay. So here's the deal with tools. Um, you can get any sort of tool that you want. You can really get them anywhere. I use a disposable one. So I use it once and then I'm done with it. Um, the razor is really, really small. Again, you, you have to be gentle, um, like anything else with your face. Like you, you don't want to you know go too hard and aggressive, um, again, with anything else on your face. So you can get whatever tool you want. You literally just like barely like kind of pull it down your face. You can, I go down, um, because I find that gets the most hair off in like the quickest amount of time. And honestly, yeah, you can get whatever tool you want and it does not take long and no, it doesn't hurt and no, you won't grow a beard. I'm going to throw that out there again. Thank you. Also, um, I may have been like online shopping while you said this, but how long does it take? Like, is it five minutes, three hours? Like what? (laughs) Um, six hours. No, I'm just kidding. It takes approximately. No, that would be a no for me. Yeah. Right. I won't do anything for six hours. I would be like relatable. Um, no, it takes about ten minutes. It, it's all about. I feel like I've gotten faster the more like times I'm doing it. I obviously am like very gentle because it's my face, and I'm also like really careful around my eyebrows because like my worst case scenario is like shaving a brow off. Um, so, no, I just like I don't want that to happen to me. Um, so. Yeah, it takes about 10 ish minutes. Um, it, you can go faster, but I prefer to take my time and make sure I get everything how I want it, especially because it only I only do it once a month. So taking 10, 15 minutes once a month is like not a huge commitment for me. Um, and it's like the same as wearing like a sheet mask or something like it. It's the same amount of time. I usually do eyebrow threading and sometimes mm-hmm. I do it on my upper lip, but that hurts so bad. So I've been staying away from it. But have either of you guys tried threading? Do you usually prefer waxing? What does that look like for you guys? So for me, I love, love, love threading. I feel like it lasts longer. Um, to your point, Laura, my upper lip hurts. It's probably the worst pain I've ever felt as far as like beauty. Um, and so, yeah, I love threading. I feel like, again, it it's just, it lasts longer. Waxing is just, I don't know. I feel like they don't get the arch of your brow right with waxing. Like it's just right. like a lot into it. So I love threading. Yeah. How long does dermaplaning last? Did you say that, Maddie? Um, I said that I do it once a month. I find that like, I don't know, it just, you kind of have to like feel out what's right for you. I used to wax my eyebrows and it, for me, like hurts so bad. Like the underneath of the brow, like is so like horrible. It's sensitive. Right. And so I just use my little dermaplaning wand and I go under and instead of, you know, something that costs, you know, kind of a lot to do waxing. Um, it's a simple purchase for my dermaplaning tools and, yeah, it's way faster too. And it also doesn't hurt. Like I'm all about making my routines not painful. So yeah, dermaplaning all the way. I encourage you to try it. If if threading is really painful for you, definitely try dermaplaning. It could work. I feel um, like you can save money and not be in pain. So I don't know why I haven't done this. The win-win. Like it's win-win. a win-win. I love that. Um, speaking of other like facial things, I recently started using an ice roller every morning. So it's a roller, but there's like it, there's like an ice pack inside of it, if that makes sense. So there are little crystals that so you put it in your freezer or your fridge, depending how cold you want it. And then you roll, like it really does depuff my face. Because I'm someone who wakes up in the morning, my eyes are puffy, my skin is puffy, no matter what my nighttime skin care, whatever my nighttime skincare routine was, it's just puffy. So I'm obsessed. Have you guys tried it or what are your thoughts? Yes, I'm obsessed with face rolling. I have like a rose quartz roller, I think. Mm-hmm. I think I the pro tip. It's so much more refreshing when it's chill. And I actually keep yeah. some skincare products in my fridge too, if you guys don't do that yet. Highly recommend it. What do you keep in your fridge? Like moisturizers or serums or what? Yeah, mostly my nighttime moisturizer. So it's a little bit more thick. And then I have some face masks that I keep in there. And if I'm doing a sheet mask, I like to pop that in the freezer for a few minutes beforehand too. It's just, 
I feel like it makes my skin so much more less puffy, you know, like really just calms and cools everything. Um, for me, I love, love, love my skin fridge. I feel like at first I was like, what? A skincare fridge? That's probably like the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But now wait, I'm obsessed with it. Wait, wait, you have a fridge for skincare? Yes. It's portable. You can take it in the car. It is perfect. You guys need, like, need to mind. get one. Okay, you that's, going on, that's going on like every holiday list, like wish list yeah. I have. I will 100% um, be getting one of those this holiday mm -hmm. season. Wow. Oh my gosh, so cute. Wow. Okay, yeah. I, I feel like I haven't really taken advantage of all the pros that rolling has, you know? Like sometimes I'll do it at night if I'm like, oh, I like forgot that I bought this. Like, let me just use it, yeah. you know? But I never thought about putting it in the fridge. That's genius. So, let me ask, do you guys do it in the morning or do you do it at night? Like, can you do it both times? Is there such a thing as too much rolling? Like, tell me everything. I need to try it. Yeah, I do mine at night mostly when I'm putting on, like I said, that heavier moisturizer for overnight. What do you do, Madeline? Do you do it twice a day or? I feel like you could do either. I do it in the morning just because mine is like frozen. It's super cold and I like struggle with puffiness in the morning. Um, but I know lots of people love doing it at night with serums. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. That's just what I've been doing. And I actually have seen an improvement. I feel like also, um, obviously I'm not a skincare professional, but like it's worked for me because I have, um, my skin really irritable and I struggle with a lot of breakouts. So I feel like the, I don't know, like ice rolling it has just calmed my skin in some capacity. Like it does not feel as red and irritated. It just feels much calmer overall. And that's, I've been doing this for a few, for like six months now. So, wow. Fine. All right, you convinced me. I'm gonna try that tonight as well. Definitely. I need to get that skincare fridge though, because right now all of my products are like next to my hot sauce packets. <laughs> definitely need to clear that up. <laughs> For sure, definitely get you one as soon as possible. Dang, okay, well, this has been so fun. Um, okay, so obviously we all have a lot of thoughts um, on honestly a lot of things. Um, so let us know what you guys think using the hashtag beauty school and tagging her campus and Too Faced. Using Too Faced products like the chocolate contour and the diamond highlighter make me feel beautiful because they enhance my features just the right amount. This subtle enhancement makes me feel confident and to me, feeling beautiful means being confident. One thing that I truly love about Too Faced products is their pigmentation. Everything that they always produce from their sweet peach to their chocolate palette is always having a great color payoff. And can't mention that they always really smell good. And as a person who loves eyeshadow and loves expressing themselves through their eyes, it's always great to have a nice shade range as well as something to really express my personality and my vibrancy. Too Faced beauty products make me feel confident because even though I'm using that to cover my imperfections, I feel like it really enhances natural beauty. So every time I wear Too Faced, I not only feel good in my own skin and I feel like I look great, but I receive a lot of compliments on my skin. That is all due to the Born This Way Super Concealer, but I just really love it. I love the way it makes me feel and I just love the overall brand message. Okay, Maddie, you've officially convinced me. I'm definitely going to have to try incorporating dermaplaning into my skincare routine. I'm excited to now introduce our next beauty school professor, Ashley Wallace. Ashley is a self-taught traveling makeup artist and beauty influencer who started her career in the makeup industry in 2014 with just two clients who were getting ready for prom. Ashley loves to make people feel welcomed and beautiful and treats all of her clients as such and aims to help them transform into their inner diva. I can't wait to see the glam look she has in store for us. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Ashley. Hey y'all, it's Ashley, aka It's Hot Chick, and welcome to my Too Faced Beauty School session. And we are gonna be creating this golden and purple glam eye using all Too Faced products, of course. So let's jump right into it, keep on watching. Okay, starting off with clean skin. The key to any makeup application, you have to have clean skin ready for the makeup. To prep my lips, I'm gonna use the lip injection. It smells so good, it smells like candy just to plump and moisturize my lips. 
Now going in with the Hangover 3-in-1 Setting Spray and the Hangover Primer, I'm using these two to prep and moisturize my skin before foundation. For foundation, I'm taking the Too Faced Born This Way Foundation in the color Tiramisu. This foundation matches me so perfectly, you guys. For highlighting and contouring, I'm going to take the Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealers to do so. The colors that I'm using is Caramel, Chestnut, and Sable. I'm using the lighter concealers under my eye, on the bridge of my nose, on my forehead, my upper lip, and my chin. And for the darker color, I'm contouring with, so I'm using that around my forehead and the hollows of my cheeks. Now that we're all blended, I'm taking the translucent medium setting powder to set all of my highlighted areas. On to brows, I'm taking the Chocolate Brownie Eyebrow Pencil and the Chestnut Concealer to sculpt and define my brows. Brows are super important, so make sure you take your time with them. I'm prepping my eyes with the Shadow Insurance Primer so that my eyeshadow will stay all day, all night long, wherever you're going, it won't budge or move. Now on to the eyeshadow. I'm taking the Pumpkin Spice Eyeshadow Palette, perfect for the holiday season, you guys. And we're gonna create this super simple cut crease eyeshadow look. For my entire crease, I'm blending Warm and Cozy and Ginger Spice right into my crease area. Once I'm finished with that, the easiest way to cut your crease, you guys, and here's a tip. Just put the primer on your lid as low as you can to the lash line, look straight up, and boom, you have your line where you want the cut crease to start at. Now for the lid, I'm using Fall Vibes and PSL and Chill, and I'm smoking it out with Spice of Life. Before I add lashes, I'm using the Better Than Sex Eyeliner to create a wing and the Better Than Sex Mascara. Now to finish up the look, I'm using the Rich and Dazzling Lip Gloss in the color Networth. Now to lock and seal the look, I'm using the Hangover Setting Spray. And here's a completed look. Make sure you get your hands on these Too Faced products. You will not regret it. And if you choose to recreate this look, make sure you tag me and Too Faced on your social platforms. Thank you for tuning in. Bye-bye. Thank you, Ashley. You look stunning. And now it's somehow a ready time for our final session of the day. We've really saved a treat for the end here, a conversation between my co-founder, Windsor Western, and Jared Blandino, the co-founder and chief creative officer of Too Faced. Jared is behind some of the best-selling and most innovative products in the beauty biz, including America's number one best-selling prestige mascara, Better Than Sex, and America's number one selling prestige lip gloss, Lip Injection Extreme. He and Windsor will be chatting about the Too Faced story and what it's like to run a beauty brand today. Let's head over to Jared and Windsor. Hi, Jared. Hi, Windsor, how are you? I am so great. I'm so excited to talk to you today. Me too, it's finally here. It's finally here. So this has been a dream of mine, honestly, to talk to you. I am such a huge, huge fan of yours. I think the world of you and the business that you've built. So I am like 
honestly pinching myself right now just to be able to have this conversation. You're so sweet. I'm really excited to be here too. This is just something we've been working on for so long and I'm so excited that it's finally here and we get to share it with everyone. I know. So you are the man who needs no introduction, but would you, you do like, what's your, your best intro? How do you like to describe yourself? Oh, I'm Jared Blandino, co-founder and chief creative officer of Too Faced Cosmetics. Yes, you are. Yeah. Um, and you founded uh, Too Faced Cosmetics. You founded it in the 90s. So yeah. I just want to dive on in. What inspired you to start this fabulous company? You know, we created Too Faced in 1998. Um, my last job was at the mall, and it really was just wanting to celebrate the fact that it's so, it's just so much fun to be a girl, you know, as a, as a gay boy's perspective in the world. Um, I thought, why are they all taking this so seriously? And, and you get to reinvent yourself every day, have some fun. And, and then today, like it's such a new world guys get to wear makeup and it's just, just such an exciting, beautiful way of expressing how you feel inside right here, you know? And, um, it's my greatest hope that you'll feel the most yourself in my brand in Too Faced. And, we just want you to win and we want you to be the best version of yourself. So what was your first product? And by the way, I'm wearing full Too Faced Cosmetics today. Elise uh, did a master class with me earlier and having Elise teach me how to do my makeup live was so fun. Um, so I feel I feel fabulous today. So thank She's you amazing. That. I love that girl. Um, she just epitomizes what it means to be a Too Faced human being. You know, she's lovely and she's kind and she's strong and she's creative and just love her. But um, yeah, so the first products we ever created were glitter eyeshadow. There was no glitter eyeshadow before Too Faced that I know of. That is um, hard to believe. We created, uh, you know, I launched back in 1998 with Jeremy, my husband. Um, now, um, we had 10 eyeshadows, 10 lipsticks, and eight nail polishes. And it just changed the world. That is amazing. So talk to me about that. You go from glitter eyeshadow and nail polish and lipstick and how do you get started, right? Like there, we have a lot of beauty entrepreneurs who are tuning in today who are so inspired by you and want to follow in your footsteps. You know, back in the late 90s, it was a different world. There, there, there were just traditional cosmetic lines out there, except uh, for, uh, for Too Faced and a couple others, it just was like big companies, you know? Um, but it was just really just, you know, I think being naive and by being so naive that you don't know what your dream that your dream is impossible, you know, that we didn't know it was unattainable. So we made it happen. It's, it's almost like that blind ambition. You, you don't take no for an answer. You learn from your failure as much as your successes and you don't give up. And, um, you know, I prayed a lot and, you know, it's, it wasn't always easy, but you find a way and you get there. And, and eventually, you know, if you really believe in something in your soul and in your, in your heart that the world needs it, it will happen. It wasn't about getting rich and it wasn't about getting famous. It was like, the world needs this. You know? Yes, um, yes. That's where I think true magic comes from. And how did you go about manufacturing in the early days, right? It's how do you go from, I want to create glitter eyeshadow. I can't believe this doesn't exist to here is my glitter eyeshadow. You know, we found a, a cosmetic lab through a friend of ours because uh, we were in the cosmetics world. I was, I was working behind the counter, you know, at Saks Fifth Avenue at Estee Lauder. And we um, found this lab in the Valley who, who I said, I worked for Estee Lauder. I did not say at the mall. And they, I think, well, I know now that they thought I meant like corporate New York. And we used to spend all our money on clothes because we got a discount. So I, sure. you know, I come in and like head to toe Gautier and I'm like, I have this idea, you know? And it was only like, oh gosh, six months later, we were there working on the glitter eyeshadow and things. And I said, I have to leave. I have a shift at four. And they go, what do you mean you have a shift? They go, I have a shift at four. And they're like, where do you work? And I was like, I work at Saks. And they're like, what? But it was too late. It was too late. I'd already gotten in. I'd already done it. And um, I learned a lot. You know, they they ended up selling the glitter formula to everyone. I didn't have contracts settled mm -hmm. at that point. I didn't know enough, but I didn't care. I was just so happy that my ideas and my, and my kind of um, inspiration was out there in the world. So what advice would you give if you could go back and talk to yourself at 18? What would you tell yourself? I would say, um, relax. It's going to be okay. Relax. Yeah. Not everything is make or break, do or die. Um, and that these are the good, these are the good times. These are the good old days. You're in them. Enjoy yeah. them. You know, yeah. when you're only able to um, eat peanut butter sandwiches every night and you're just trying to put everything you've got into your dream, 
it's pretty amazing. It's pretty spectacular, you know? I love that. I love that these are the good old days and just embrace them. Yeah. Um, so thinking back to um, being a teenager and, and all of that, did you have a most favorite job growing up? Well, I got fired a lot from jobs. I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> I was always like, you know, I had, I had visions. I had other ideas. I'm like, I could do this better. I could do this different. Or like, I don't want to do that. That's boring. Like, I had a problem fitting in mm. to the other people's expectations of me. So um, I did. I taught art to kids when I was very young. I loved that job. It was magical. Um, and I and I and I really did love and connect to selling makeup to women. I, I just felt like I. I could be their gay best friend for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and together we're gonna we're gonna create the best version of you. And I was just so passionate about instilling self instilling self-esteem into people that it drove me here. That's amazing. As you reflect on founding Two Face Cosmetics in the 90s and then fast forwarding all the way to today, do you have a favorite memory um, about starting your brand that that really like shines? Gosh, a favorite memory. There have been so, so many. Or a few to highlight. Yeah, that. you know, honestly, the first memory was I got to quit my job and do Too Faced full time. That was my main goal. Yeah. And I remember I was driving um, out of Saks in my little convertible car, and I, I remember the song I was listening to, and and I and, and I thought, what was the song? It was Jump by Madonna, who's now yes. a friend of mine. <laughs> And it was kind of like jump in, right? And I thought, I can do this. This is going to happen. You know, I never doubted for a second that the world didn't want it. It was, can I figure this out? Mm -hmm. Can I get, can I keep up with the shooting star? That was a great memory. Um, you know, when when we when I created Better Than Sex mascara, no one would no one would take not only a mascara called Better Than Sex. Thank you, number one mascara in America and across the world. Um, they wouldn't sell a pink mascara. And I was like, you don't get it. Like, you don't get it. Not everything has to be black. You need to trust in your customer that she's got it. She's got style. She's got a personality. She gets it. And I had to write letters to the retailers that Better Than Sex wasn't vulgar, that it actually came from um, Marilyn Monroe being on Broadway. And they asked her, how did it feel? And she said, it felt better than sex. And, you know, and then it turned into a cake. And now it's a mascara. But you know, um, it's, you know, I, I think my struggles have been my blessing. Cause when I get, when I get resistance, I push even harder. Mm. So, you know, when you're in those moments, when everyone doesn't get it and everyone's pushing against you and people are, are saying, no, you can't for people like me, it just drives us harder. And I think yeah. it's a gift in the end, you know, it almost makes you stronger and sharper and you have to refine your ideas. You have to refine your pitch. So, cause if everyone's, if everything's easy, you don't have to keep pushing. I love that you said that, Windsor. I hate easy. I want nothing great comes from easy. I want yeah. no part of easy, you yeah. know? Nothing yeah. to do with that. A hundred percent. I love that. I love that. So let's talk about a day in your life right now. I, in my mind, you have the perfect job, the coolest job, and your life is all glitz and glamour. Um, <laughs> walk us through a normal day in as much detail as you're comfortable with. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, normal day now. I, I get up. Um, I I Skype my Pilates instructor, so we can't be together. So I go to my home gym, do Pilates, and then I start work around like eight thirty, uh, nine o'clock, and it's just one Zoom call after the other. You know, just trying to keep up with the creative process, with connecting to one another and being creative. I'll share the computer and I'll work with my graphic artist creating and. And then, you know, we're, we're, we're sending things back and forth. I have people delivering stuff all day long, formulas and things. And, uh, and then, you know, by the time five o'clock, six o'clock comes, I'm so worn out. I don't know how you feel, but I'm even more tired Yeah. because you have to work so much harder just to have a conversation. You yeah. have to schedule everything and, um, you know, but, but I love it. And so then, um, you know, that time comes and I, Jeremy and I take Clover for a walk and we wind down, we have dinner and. You know, we, we just spend our, our quality time together. Because even though we're together all the time, we have very different jobs. Yeah. So they, you know, he's doing all this business and I'm doing all the creative. And, and that's how it's been. 
I love that. Talk to me about working with Jeremy. I mean, it is, um, I have two business partners and the three of us founded the company together 11 years ago. We were students. It was in our dorm room. And, so you know, cool. we, we joke that we're married to each other because we honestly spend more time with each other than anyone else. And it's been this beautiful relationship. You all actually are married. So yeah. t talk about that dynamic um, within the business. It's, it's, it's a love story more than it's anything. I'll tell you our, 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 our life. But I met Jeremy when we were very young and he was this goofy kid. And this has never happened to me ever in the history of my life. I saw this person. And I said, Jared, like, pay attention to him. He's going to be big. He's going to be something big. I didn't know I was going to fall in love, but I had this like right as coattails, like connect to this kid. He, he's going to be big time. And I had no reason to think that. And it's been like that ever since we, we are the, we are the, two halves of a perfect whole. He makes me strong um, where I'm weak and vice versa. I trust him with my life, with everything. It's the greatest gift to have somebody that you know has your back 100% who will, who will keep you in line because I get very emotional. And you know he's, he just keeps me stable and he's such a smart business mind. And when you have partners that you can trust in and believe in, it's just everything, isn't it? It, it honestly is, and I wouldn't have it any other way. And it's, I, I find the same thing. We have such different skill sets, and we balance each other out so yes. well. We just so yeah. important. Yes. It's so important that you don't overlap, that you don't step on each other's toes, but you lift each other up, you make each other better, yeah. and you support one another. And it, yeah. it, and it has been such a blessing to do this with the person I love so much. Um, you know, That's our story is a love story, you know. I um, love that. It is. That's incredible. That yeah. is absolutely incredible. Uh, so if you all are, it sounds like you're always in product development and working with your graphic designers and testing out different formulas. What are the dream products that you, it seems like you all have made everything and so many amazing different things. Do you have dream products that you're still trying to create? Yes, of course. You know, it, it really has to do with science hasn't caught up with my dream. Mm. And, and that's always the case for great things. That was the case for better than sex. Uh, it was the case for Born This Way Matt that we just launched. Mm -hmm. It's trying to dream up what this could be, what it should be, and try to find the science to make it happen. Uh, when I created Damn Girl Mascara, it, it's a formula that couldn't be created in the mask scale. It could only be created in a small mm -hmm. kind of little environment. And we had to go to jet plane manufacturers to get the to get the propellers to whip up the to whip up the the bats that could create the millions of of units. You know, oh, yeah. it's fun. It's create, it, it's looking for a way to turn no's into yeses. Nobody can say no to me. They can say not, not right now, but mm -hmm. you don't say no. No is a dream killer. I, so, yeah, I got a list longer than I could even, <laughs> you know, go through in this time we have together of products that I want to create. So let's think about the future then. What do you think are going to be the top beauty trends of 2021? I think color and glamour is coming back, boo. Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't know about you, but I'm ready for the pageantry of life. I'm ready to celebrate. I'm ready to look for the best in each other. I am so tired of the weight, of the heaviness, of the restriction. I just want to love one another, have fun again, glam up, glitter up, color up, you know, um, full pigment, just... I just think we're ready for it again, don't you? I totally do. I totally do. And you know, I I love all the tips and tricks I learned from Elise today, and just continuing to play with everything. Yeah. It just putting on like the lip injection gloss, for instance. I'm not normally I'm a chapstick girl. I put on this gloss, and my lips look beautiful, and it's just got yes. this. Shine, and I just feel, I just feel great. You know, it's yes. just fun. That's what it's about. It's about. It's about. It's about energizing your soul and your spirit. Yes. You need to have our pillow bomb, honey. Like if you want, if you're a lip balm fan, that's yeah. like an absolute pillow bomb. Okay. I but I just that. hope, you know, it's it's. I was I had this conversation yesterday with my team. We need to be. We need to inspire people to be happy, to be joyful, to be mm -hmm. to be conscious, respectful, to be grateful, to be smart, to be all of those things, but to to love one another and to bring out the best in each other. And I think that that's so important, guys, that we need to look for the best in each other. And we are so much more alike than we are different. I don't care what political party you're with. I don't care where you're from, who you love. We're, we're the same at heart. Yeah. And we need to love each other and lift each other up. And if I can do that through beauty, then baby, let's do that. I love that. I absolutely love that. So that kind of leads into my next question. And I kind of feel like you already answered it, but what does beauty mean to you? Wow. 
Beauty means in the very, very, very end, loving yourself and expressing how you feel in here, out here. And it's about looking at the things you love, not the things you don't. We could pick each other. Like when we go in the mirror, we could pick ourselves apart. You know, yeah. we could pick each other apart. No, it's wow, your brows are amazing. That lip is incredible. Your skin looks fat, but looking for the best in ourselves and looking for the best in one another and, and, and celebrating that. Yes. Yes. I am. Um, I was speaking with a, a young woman. She's one of our interns and we were talking about different beauty products and she was like, well, I am really into my mascara and my brow gel because that is my favorite part of my face. I love my eyes, I love my eyebrows, and I just want everybody to notice. And I thought that was so cool. She didn't say, my eyes look bad if I don't wear mascara. She didn't yeah. say, I have crap eyebrows on my own. She said, this is my favorite thing and I want everyone to see it. Yes, yes, that's what beauty is. Mm -hmm. Celebrating the things you love about yourself. And you know what? We can hide or, or, or sculpt or whatever the things we don't. And isn't that what's so fun? When, you know, at the end of yeah. the day, when you wash it off, you just love who you are. Yeah. And during the day when we got makeup on, you become whoever you want to be. A hundred percent. So what was your first beauty product splurge as you were, were growing up? What's the first oh, thing you were on? Yeah, I'll tell you. Um, it was creme de la mer. Uh, uh, I remember I was like, I can't afford, you know, it came to socks and I was just like, every, I'd heard all this stuff about it. And I was like, I need to try this. And I had a little jar and I coveted it. And I just barely used it. And I'll tell you, I, I, I had a pug at the time, my little pug, and she had skin rashes. And I'd heard how good the screen was. So I used a little bit on her and it made her skin better. And so then I ended up using the whole jar on my pug. <laughs> you used creme de la mer on your dog? Years later, I was at a dinner uh, and I was sitting next to this man in a suit. And I was like, oh, great. This is going to be fun. You know, it was like a business dinner. And I found out he was one of the head chemists who had helped create products um, like that for, for La Mer and other brands. And I was telling him how, what I loved and what I didn't and what I would do if I could change it. And he sent me this cream in the mail that, that became my pillow cream that we're selling now. I have it on. I have no highlighter or anything. On. This is like- Are you serious? That's no, just real? Stardust. We put real Stardust in it. Anyway, he created this cream with me. And, and you can buy it now. And it's like, it's, it's these full circle moments that I love so much, you know, that are so fun. And I love Lamar and I still use it, believe me. But just to be able to tweak your own cream and create your own cream after, you just never think these things are possible, you know? I love it. So if you're thinking about all of the women who are watching today, or all the young people watching today who are maybe exploring and starting to splurge on a few select products from the Too Faced line, where do you think they should start. You absolutely start with your skin. Born This Way uh, Foundation is, yeah. a, is a product that I literally, thank you, love you. I literally started that product with, with skincare. I had serums and things that I loved that I relied on. And I said, reverse engineer this and turn this into a makeup. It is about looking at your skin and complimenting your skin. Never your makeup. It's, mm -hmm. I was born like this. I don't ever want somebody to say, what makeup do you have on? I want them to say, your skin looks great. Yeah. And I put coconut water in there, which is, which I, which I learned uh, on a tour in Hawaii that coconut milk and coconut water is the closest thing to blood plasma on the planet. And they told me that during world war II, they used to do emergency blood transfusions with it. This is what I was told on this tour. And I thought, what could I do with that? Your skin loves it. I put Alpine Rose, which is this rose that's, that in the, in the, in the Arctic, when everything's dead and everything's white, this little rose lives. And so we just get the essence of that rose to re-energize your skin. So it's great for your skin. You look great. And then of course, better than sex mascara. Yes. Hello. How can we move forward without that? I know. And, um, yeah. and I think that especially now, if you can still get it, the pumpkin spice eyeshadow palette. Ooh, it's, yeah. it's out right now for Christmas is amazing. It's like, you'll wear it all year long. You'll love it. Talk to me about the scents that are in your products because I think it's so fun and playful that everything smells good. You know, I've been inspired by food my whole life. I think food is sexy. I think food is beautiful. And um, I've always been very, I was that kid who always wanted those scratch and sniff stickers. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted the whole world. I wanted it to smell. I wanted it to be colorful, you know, and I've always been inspired. And, and then through, through creating products like our chocolate bronzers, that are, that are pigmented with cocoa powder and our peach palette that broke the internet. I got interested in baking. And now I, on my Instagram at Jared Blandino, I do yeah. baking um, tutorials and I just love it so much. And it, you know, 
It's the closest yeah. thing to developing makeup that I've ever experienced. Different yeah. ingredients, different textures, different colors create one beautiful new thing. That is fantastic. So I'm obviously have been a follower of yours for a long time. But you are so fun, everyone. Follow Jared Blandino on Thank Instagram. Thank you. That is amazing. You are just so fun to follow and look at everything that you do. And you baking, like what, how fun is this? That's amazing. Yeah, but baking is so fun. I have yeah. a great friend, Rosalia Pensino is a great friend of mine. She's this amazing baker on YouTube. And she invited me to her house. Christmas, Christmas is my favorite time of year. And gingerbread cookies are my favorite cookie in the world. So she invited me to her house to bake gingerbread cookies. And I was like, this is like making eyeshadow, this ingredient, that ingredient. And then at the end, you get to eat it. <laughs> I was hooked. So this may be a leading question, but if you weren't creating beauty products, what would you be doing? Well, I, I think I would definitely be on television in some sort. My uh, great friend of mine, one of my best friends is Jeannie Mai. She's on a show called The Real. And I just love talking to people and sharing my thoughts and my ideas and my heart with people. So I'd probably definitely be doing some form of that. Amazing. And I'm yeah, baking on TV, of course. Baking on TV. You would totally be baking on TV. Yeah. I, can, I would watch your show. You should just do it anyway. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Christmas cookie challenge. Call me. I want to do that so bad. Okay, call, please call Jared, call Jared. Okay. Um, so I, uh, last question for today um, is what is the biggest lesson that you've learned in founding Two Face? It, it is to, to honestly stay grateful and to trust. Like I believe in God. I, I, I pray to Jesus all the time. Like I don't, I don't understand what's happening to me, but I trust you and you continue moving forward to rely on, on God, to rely on yourself to believe that there's something bigger than just you because at the end of this what's this for you know money this sounds so cliche money can't make you happy money magnifies money and success success magnify who you are mm -hmm. so i want to be magnified as a giving loving creative kind strong um loving human being and, and my in my goal here on the planet is to spread in my with my life is to reflect god's light and that's what i want to do and if, if if this is the medium he gave me to do it, then that's that's what I want to do. And don't let it change you. Of course, we grow, grow. I want you to grow, but don't let it change that little kid in you that that had that spark, that had that dream. Um, stay who you are. Stay grateful and trust. I love that, Jared. Thank you so much. This has been such a life moment for me to get to hang out with you and have this conversation. And I know everyone who is at beauty school has really loved it. And you've just been. Um, a highlight of the day. So thank you so much. Windsor, thank you. It, it, thank you for giving me this opportunity for letting us create these amazing tutorials, guys. This is a masterclass to the next level. We've never done this. We're giving you our inside secrets, the, the hottest beauty tips and trends. We're showing you every like behind the scene makeup trick that you'll ever need. And, and without you, it wouldn't have been possible. So thank you so much. And I, and I hope everyone has the best Christmas ever and that we all just, you know, get everything we want from Santa and life is good. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Jared. Life is good. Thank you guys. Bye. Wow. Can we just take a second, you guys? What an unbelievably jam packed, fun and educational day. My head is seriously spinning with so many fun tips and tricks and new inspo that I know I'm going to try ASAP. So now I'm wondering, what was your favorite part of beauty school? Let us know on social with hashtag beauty school and share the moments that stuck with you the most. Be sure to enter our giveaway on the Her Campus Instagram to win a ton of amazing Too Faced products and head to beautyschool.hercampus.com for even more exclusive content. Thank you, thank you to all of you for tuning in today, to our editors, community members, and beauty school professors, and of course, a huge thank you to our partner, Too Faced Cosmetics, as well as Jared, Elise, and Jasmine for making today possible. You guys are the best. Until next time, stay well, stay beautiful, and take care, friends.